Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Palmetto Cats Live, where we unpack the anglers of YouTube. I just want to thank everybody for coming here on a night that's not normally the night that I usually go live. But uh, when you get a call from my guest uh, that I have coming on here and he says, hey, can we go live Saturday night? You do it. So uh, I just want to welcome. Uh, it's been kind of a secret. I know a lot of people. Uh, you know, already know who it is, but I tried to keep it secret. But it's Mr. Chris Flores, Muddy What's River Catfishing. How you doing, buddy? All right, man. Yourself? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. And, uh, you know, I just want to thank you for agreeing to come in. I know you're busy, man. You got like 17 jobs. And. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you, man. Thank you for taking the time to have me on your show. I know it's not your regular time and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it goes both ways, right? Yeah, man. Hey, you know, what am I What am I doing on a Saturday night anyway but sitting on the couch watching, <laughs> <laughs> watching television and eating ice cream anyway? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, man, I, I, I just want to thank you. And I want to say hey to everybody that's in here. Tim Molina, Richard Ward, Chad, Avid, Brandon Cross, Mr. Gadget, my wife. Hello, honey. She's in the next room. Catfish and Crappy, Tim Molina. Um, bunch of awesome people that always come in and support me and others every single week. And I just, Ace, how you doing, buddy? I'm just so blessed to have so many people that want to come in and, and say hello and just chat about catfishing and fishing in general and getting to know people and hopefully my show is is um you know is about catfishing but also it's just about the people who come in and if i hadn't said it before uh i like to have people in that are wholesome family people that put out content that anyone and everyone can watch and you're that person chris so well, thank, thank you man. man i appreciate that yeah, I've seen Mike Irvin, Maurice, Case and Pine River Boys, uh, Quarantine Blues. Man, we got a bunch of them in here tonight. So, what made you want to get started building rods? That's my first question for you. <laughs> Man. So, well, um, do you remember? Let's see. Uh, I don't even know that. I'm so bad with dates, man. Times so I, I don't know. What all right. I did yesterday, but uh, there was there, we had it here in, in New Mexico. We had this really bad hailstorm that came through, and it just tore up a bunch of houses, the roofs and stuff, you know. And so I, I was doing roofing for three years. That's how bad it was. So I, wow. I did roof after roof after roof, and I saved up a bunch of money. And I decided. I said, you know what? I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but I'm going to save a bunch of money and I'm going to invest it. And uh, I thought about a few different things, you know, maybe doing this, doing that. And and the rod idea kind of popped in, into my head. But I was I was real leery because, I mean, that's people are either going to like it or they're not, you know. Mm -hmm. And if, if I was to invest like ten thousand dollars into, uh, you know, rods that nobody liked. I got rods for life, you know, free rods for life in my house, right? You know, and uh, and I'm out ten thousand bucks or whatever. But uh, it was kind of like a leap of faith thing, you know. And uh, I I figured, who better to invest in than yourself, you know? So I, I had, even though it was it was hard to grab that nerve to do, I I, I took that leap of faith and and I got started on the rod business. And uh, so far, it's been good. I've I've had, I mean, it's as with anything, you've got growing pains and stuff like that, you know, and uh, we're figuring things out here and there as we go along. And my, I, all I, all I want to do is strive to make a, an excellent product. And, uh, you know, I'm happy with feedback, good or bad. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll find a little thing here and we'll, we'll correct it. So, you know, as it, as it has uh, evolved, we're just making it better as we go. So I'm mm -hmm. happy with it at the end result. And, I'm doing what I love, you know. And so the um the flathead rod was first, right? Am I correct? Right, right. Yeah, flathead so rod the, was the first. One. And that was what year was that? What year did that come out? <laughs> what year are we in? 
What year? Oh, uh, 2020? I, I want to say like maybe three years ago or so. Okay. It was, it was okay. three. I want to say like three years, probably. Yeah, three years. And then and then uh, maybe a year later, I came out with the Blue Cat Rod or, or yeah, something like that. And awesome. uh, working on another one right now, man. Yeah, that, that's, 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 one, that's one of my questions, man. Don't, yeah. don't get it. All right. So oh, yeah, no, no, go ahead. So you, said it's a, it's a medium, you said it's a medium heavy action rod that you're working on? It's a medium action. Yeah, the, medium the, action. Okay. the blue cat and the flathead rod are both medium heavy. And uh, the main difference is the length. Uh, the flathead rod is seven foot and the blue cat is seven foot six. Right. But that that little bit of extra length gives it a softer tip for the blue cat rod a little bit, gotcha. but it still lands in that medium heavy classification. Awesome, but, awesome. Uh, yeah, man. So I see chunky cats in here, the outdoors with day fishing and stuff. Uh, they're coming in slowly, but they're coming in, man. I, I, <laughs> me and you were talking. You and I were talking. You know, we try to keep it a secret. Um, and that may have impacted who or who did or didn't come in. But Chris, I, I want to go ahead and, and start this. I, I I've been a little dishonest with you. Uh oh, uh oh. I told, before I you, told before you, you continue that. Before you continue that, man, let me jump in here real quick and just say, hey, thank all you guys for joining and supporting the channels, mine and and Kevin's as well. And uh, even in the community itself, I see you guys jumping in and out of each other's uh, videos and live streams and stuff. That's awesome, man. That's what the catfish community is all about and uh that positive support is what we need so uh i can't see who's in the chat right now but uh thank all of you guys for joining us so i just want to throw that out there real quick man thank you buddy well it's not a bad lie but uh it's not quite a secret who was coming on the show in fact i've messaged a bunch of people um and i don't know who's gonna come and do it but i know one of them's in here right now um to just give you a little surprise uh i've okay. messaged people that maybe you've had an impact on over the eight years that you've been doing youtube and they're going to be popping in throughout the show just to to let you know how much you mean to the catfish community and one of them's oh, already yeah. here mr lyle, hey, lyle here. how you doing brother i'm doing good my friend how are you doing Oh, I'm doing just fine, man. Uh, it's good to see you out here, man. Oh, you know what? Uh, Kevin sent me a link to this, and uh, you and I know each other for a long time, and and we both tried to do the right thing in the sport. And I want to congratulate you first off on making the impact on the catfishing world that you have, and sticking with it. Um, there's, you see a lot of guys come and go, and they try this and they try that. But Chris Flores has always been a constant. He's somebody that everybody could look up to with his family, with what he does in the sport and his videos. You're top notch, buddy. Thank you, Lyle. I really appreciate that, man. It means a lot. And uh, you as well, my friend. You've been there for years, and you, you know, <laughs> doing your thing and supporting everybody, and always giving away prizes and stuff, and uh, education, educating the, the anglers as well, man. So uh, hats off to you, man. Well, thanks a lot, Chris. And and I don't want to take up a bunch of you guys' time, but thank you for everything you've done. Keep after it. We're all going to keep watching you as long as you're there. And uh, just thank you for everything you've done for our sport. Thank you, Lyle. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for letting me in, Kevin. No, thank you, Lyle. Thank you. Yeah, man. So that's going to keep happening all stream. Oh, you're just man, you make me cry, man. In, and, and we're just going to let you know. I And I told you on the phone um, earlier this week, or I can't even remember. The days are starting to run together. But you, I've never done anything for you. You've never done anything for me. But what you don't realize is that through your videos and how you carry yourself and me, I got to know you from people just coming to meet you at the catfish conference and then posting videos and just to see the smile on your face and the time you took for every one of them just to say hello and give an autograph or be on their YouTube channel. I feel like I know you and me and you kind of talked and you said, yeah, man, it's 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 a little and you didn't say weird, but I'm saying weird. Um, you said it's kind of weird that people will come up and talk to you like they've known you for years and, <laughs> because they do, they do, but you don't know them. So you're having this conversation like y'all are best buddies. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and 
you know, on that, like I said, we were talking earlier about that. And honestly, I, I live for that. When I go to that catfish conference, first of all, it's a two hour difference from here to there, you know? So we're, you know, we got to be up at, at seven. That's like 5 a.m. here or whatever it is, right? Um, and then we're putting in, I mean, all day long at the show. And when I'm at the show, I'm so busy. I don't really eat. I don't, I don't, I don't got breath, you know, hardly get a bathroom break. It's nonstop on your feet all day long. Your, your feet hurt. You're tired. You're exhausted. But I will never, never, ever, ever avoid anybody, you know, intentionally. I, I do my best to say hi to everybody, shake everybody's hand, take a picture, talk to them. I want to hear their stories. Uh, no matter how tired, beat, worn out I am, because I know that at, at the end of the day, these are the guys that watch my videos, that support me, that take the time uh, to make me who I am. I mean, That's without right. without these viewers, who am I, right? So, um, yeah, it's the least that I could do is be there and and uh, meet and meet these people, shake their hands, talk to them, and even though some of these people I don't I don't know personally, but they right. they feel yeah. like they know me. I mean, it still it doesn't oh, matter. They know I mean, you. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't matter to me, man. It, I mean, if they come up talking to me like a friend, I I feel like they're a friend too. You know, just I mean, right. maybe I don't know their name, <laughs> but at that moment, but hey, you know, we can always talk about fishing. Always. So what what's your favorite food? So at CatCon, somebody can bring you some breakfast food. You like McDonald's or <laughs> man, you know what? I am not a picky eater. And, and I'm, I'm I'm the kind of guy that uh when I travel, I like to eat whatever whatever's from that area. What you know, what I will I'll go to a restaurant I've never been in. I'll say, you know, what what do you what's your best thing here? Let me let me, you know, or I'll I'll ask a waitress sometimes. You're like, what do you put it? What do you want, sir? I said, well, bring me something, whatever. <laughs> You're like, what? <laughs> so, you know, that way I try stuff I never had before. And it's just part of me not being picky. That's right. Well, fishing and stuff, um, you know, he doesn't like to do live streams. Uh, but he said, Chris treated me like he knew me the first time I ever met him three years ago. And I never forgot that. He's a great example of a humble and great guy. Thank you, man. You guys check out his channel, man. If you guys haven't, that guy... He can make anything out of anything, man. That's right. He sure can. Him. I always tease him. I say, I would keep that guy away from my rods because then he'll be making them on his videos. And <laughs> know how to make he will. Them man. <laughs> he will. And he'll say, yeah, go buy these rods. But then if you don't have the money, here you <laughs> <laughs> So here's another person I know you've uh, impacted this person's life uh, here recently in a great way. Uh, and it seems like every day he's saying your name. What's Mr. going on, my friend? What's up, uh, man? I just want I'm, I'm doing fantastic, man. And you know what? I just want to say thank you so much for what you've done to the catfish community. Um, I bring you up every now and then when I speak on on my live streams or someone else's live stream, and uh, you you've been a big influence in, in my life and what I'm doing. And um, it, it's I've learned a lot from you, and I just want to say thank you. And I just love you. I love when you go out fishing with your family. It's it's you're an amazing person. I just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done. Well, thank you, man. And thank you for what you're doing. You know, this live stream stuff is uh, from my perspective, it's something new that's 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 coming on. And uh, I haven't seen it too much. And I, I like it. You know, I enjoy it. yours, man. Yours are like 24 hour marathons. And <laughs> like I'll, I'll jump in. I'll watch a little bit. And then I. I'll go remodel the bathroom, come back. You're still on there, you know? <laughs> still on. <laughs> like, man, this guy's hardcore. But, you know, uh, props to you, brother, for what you do. I, I mean, I love I love the way you do those rods, painted, all the black lights, everything. It's so unique. And, and uh, you just keep up what you're doing, man, because uh, we all love jumping in there and, and watching you fish and catch them big old uh, blue cats that you I greatly you know, appreciate things. your kind words. And it, it, it it's really special. And I feel honored when you come in every now and then to say hello to me and, and you know, to say hello to everyone who's in, in chat. And like I said, once again, I love you. And I just want to say thank you very much for everything and, mm -hmm. and, and keep doing what you're doing. Well, thank you, man. And, I and, appreciate and, you very and, much. And put me down for four medium action rods. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I promise. Yeah. Uh, Chucky, uh, Chucky wants I those medium action job. rods. He wants those medium action rods. So those fish he pull in can seem even bigger 
Oh, uh, that's, that's what it is. Huh? That's it. 100%. Because the big rods, the big rods, just, you know, when he just gave it all away. When he catches those small fish, you know, they only bend a little bit. So he needs a medium action rod, so they'll bend over all the way. All the way. That's too funny. <laughs> Y'all are awesome. Elsie, you're really awesome, brother. I appreciate that. you, man. Thanks awesome. for jumping in and taking the time. It, it really means a lot to me what you guys are doing, man. I don't see the guy in here that got me kind of started with the whole live stream thing. PD Joe, uh, PD fishing. He, um, he kind of got me in when I started my channel, he goes, you got to watch these live streams. And so I went in and saw catfish weekly. Um, and, and then I always saw Elston in the comments area, but I never knew who he was. And then, so finally, I, I don't know what made me do it. Uh, I started checking for live streams and it was right when the shutdown happened. So he wasn't doing any. And, uh, and so then I was like, Hey man, when are you going to do another live stream? When are you going to do a live stream? Cause I'd never seen one live. And then, so when he did it for the first time, Oh, I was hooked. I was hooked. And so every time he goes live, man, I'm, I'm like the first one to jump in. So no. yeah, he, he's great, man. I know when he got that rod, when he won that rod and then he got two from you and, just all the, inter the personal interaction you had, not only in his show, but sending him those rods. I know he appreciated that. So he was actually the first person I called tonight. Um, really? Let's see, yeah. Uh, Tim Molina says, Kevin, ask him about the Cambodian guys he threw the net for at the boat ramp last weekend. Oh, yeah. There was, uh, there was some guys uh, that recognized me from my YouTube channel and uh, – um, they came up and they were, you know, they were so happy to meet me and they were telling me that they watch all my videos and stuff. And um, I asked them if they had bait and they said no. So, uh, I mean, it's no big deal. I'm already there with my net. So we threw the, threw the net and got them a little bit of bait and uh, sent them on their way. But yeah, it, that's, that's, that's the cool, thing man. that uh, yeah, <laughs> in a minute, man, uh, once we get through this, I, I do want to say something about, uh, about uh, YouTube youtubers and youtube watchers yeah and, we can uh, do that we'll, we'll bring that up here in a bit but uh charlie hubbard said yeah i met you at the catfish conference in louisville this year i had a boxer service dog oh all right yeah so if you remember I a remember boxer that, service man. dog that was told charlie there yeah That's it was me. good meeting you man uh, i wonder if uh if you'll be up there this coming year Outdoors with Dave. Chris was the first catfishing channel I ever subbed to. Love all of his videos. Really enjoyed the ones with WD-40 or onions and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was the original stuff, man. Testing all that craziness and uh, uh, trying to disprove. A lot of people didn't understand that WD-40 video. And it was probably my fault because I made it like 20 hours long. And, you know, the bottom line was it doesn't work. Don't use it. Don't pollute the rivers and the waterways. Mm -hmm. and the onion video i felt so bad because uh oh i'm sorry thank you dave i appreciate that comment, <laughs> by the way. it got me started all these uh <laughs> rabbit but, trail, uh, squirrel squirrel <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but the uh the onion video man so i had never even heard about fishing with onions and i started getting all these emails and, and facebook messages hey onions onions this onions that and uh I guess there was some TV show or something that had, they were using onions to catch catfish, and I had never seen it. So hmm. I said, well, I guess if there's that much interest in it, I'll, I'll test it out. So I set a bunch of lines out with onion on it. I think I did like a dozen of them, man, and I didn't get a single fish. And I, I felt so guilty at the end. I'm like, is this even worth posting, or should I just delete it? And I don't know. So I said, you know what? I'll do a, I'll do a how to cook onions on the campfire at the end at least so it's not a total waste of video you know? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that was the onion video right there cool man so i got a uh, someone else uh loaded up ready to go it's a new youtuber uh you've probably seen him in the chat uh if you if you've come in and watched some of these live shows uh really funny guy um really sweet guy i i know he he uh, probably doesn't want me to say that, and he's probably turning redder than his beard already is. <laughs> but uh, he's a sweet dude, and he'll do anything for you, and he's always posting people's links in chat, and that's fishing with the chat. Mr. Flores, yes, I am new to this, I've been, but I've been watching your channel for quite some time now. I just wanted to stop by and tell you how much I appreciate your humbleness like 
Kevin was just talking about is you're a very real person and like you coming into chunky uh cat's chat Kevin's chat the smaller YouTube channels that means a lot to people and what you have done and continue to do for the sport of catfishing period um the other thing when he when Kevin messaged me asking me would I want to be on it and say just a few words I was like well how has Chris impacted somebody like me and for somebody like me that has gotten into catfishing tournaments very heavily I felt the stress of that kind of stuff but I realized watching videos what you like what you put out you you're putting out stuff for the right reasons and that's what we need to continue for all of us is doing it for the right things right it doesn't matter if we're catching a little one pounder or a 70 pounder you're showing us go have fun and that's what right. I appreciate from you friend Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that I, very much, man. Uh, uh, all these kind of words that you guys are taking the time to, to say, it, it really means a lot. And it, and it kind of goes to what I want to tell you guys at the end. It, it's it's just a lot of years of hard work and, and, and uh, devotion to something and, and to see that it, it has helped a lot of people. And, you know, it makes it all worth it. You know, it makes it all worthwhile. So thank you so much for taking your time to to jump in here and uh, and tell me how you feel, you, what you think. It's a, it's an it's an honor and a, and a pleasure, and uh, I look forward to uh, seeing what you got. Uh, send me your links, man, because I I want to I want to subscribe. Oh, Chad's to good at that. Chad's good at yeah. that. He'll, he'll go put up all the links and and yeah, chat. Give me, give me a minute, and I'll, I'll I'll start loading them up in chat. But I'll send you mine um, personally. I appreciate you. Thank you, man. I appreciate you too. See ya. All right. Good night. Well, there's another one, and and uh, you know, I wanted to make sure I covered everybody that I knew would have something to say, um, because it's not just the big the big influencers that I'm trying to get to. I want to make sure this is the nicest, most respectful thing I've seen out together. Thanks to Kevin, everyone that took the time to thank Chris. Yeah, we got more coming. It's not it's not over, man. <laughs> what link did Chris say the new medium action models would be? It'll be seven foot. Okay. Yeah, I decided to go with seven foot. What what color are they going to be? Green, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be a, that's going to be a secret. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The outdoors <laughs> with Dave. Um, oh yeah, I saw that one. Uh, we already put that one. Up. I'm trying to catch up. Make sure I'm not. Let's see. Ace said, "Kevin asked Chris." If everyone that fishes with him tossed the rods <laughs> with the fish still on, <laughs> we were talking about Steven earlier today in that video that he put out. Go ahead and tell us how that went down to, uh, yesterday. Oh man, that was that was a riot, man. Uh, old old Steve, he's uh he's the one everybody says looks like old Stone Cold Steve Austin, man. In my videos, he's a great guy, man. Really, really good friend. Hey, brother, uh, brother, <laughs> brother brother what's up brother yeah so i mean he's a cool dude uh we started fishing together uh and uh just became friends through fishing like a lot of people do you know and uh so i've been telling him man we should go float tube fishing man it's it's something it's a it's a whole nother level of fishing that you, you i mean you can't even a compare i don't even a lower level to. way way lower to the yeah, water it's a lower <laughs> level <laughs> <laughs> so we, we go out i take them to this spot and it's it's what i call the it's what i call muddy river boot camp mm. and uh i'm serious when i say that because it's not i get a lot of people say i want to go fish with you and but when it's like that scenario half the people really don't want to go fish with me you know you gotta hike you gotta hike through a mesquite forest mesquite bush forest and you get cut up and and Oh man, and you're crawling through branches and you're dragging this heavy float tube and rods and they're getting hung up in the trees. And anyway, you finally pop out somewhere in the middle of nowhere and there's some water and uh, air up your float tube, jump in. And there, a lot of times the water's not even deep enough to float through, but yet it's so muddy that you're sinking in it and you're, you can't even, you're, you're, you're losing your shoes. And it's, it's almost miserable, you know, until you get to that golden pot at the end of the rainbow, <laughs> there, you know. So anyway, my buddy Steven's there fishing and he hooks into this 30-pound flathead, right? And he's fighting it around and 
uh, I tell him, take it out to the other side. And he, he goes and he kind of beaches his flow tube and he gets it, pulls it up on the flow tube and he's, you know, admiring it and whatever. And he kind of throws it. I don't know why. He kind of threw his rod over his shoulder or something. It was just kind of sitting in the background, not even on the flow tube. And that, that flathead, <laughs> it rolled on him and he just, he threw it. It kind of looked like, <laughs> <laughs> kind of reminded me of like when something's gross and you're like, ooh, you kind of throws it like that. <laughs> The fish is still hooked and it swims off, yeah. and you just see his rod you shoot know, down. I realize <laughs> he has no clue. Like, your rod just took off. He's like, "What? What are you talking?" I do. Your rod and the fish are gone. <laughs> so he, he dives in, loses his hat, finds the rod, reels the fish back in. It's uh, alright. You guys gotta check it out if you haven't seen it already. Yeah, it's drama. Yeah, yeah, man. Chris just put that video up today, and I, I wasn't gonna watch it because I was. I was watching his other videos to try to, you know, research and stuff. <coughs> and, and I was like, okay, well, let me go ahead and watch it. I was so too tempting and I'm so glad I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a great uh, time. Man. So I, I sent the link to Mike Chavez too. He's having uh web issues. So he said, Chris is one of the first catfish dudes I found on YouTube. He's the best. Great guy. Good old Jason, Mike Chavez. Man. Yeah, man. He, he cooks some delicious stuff, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. He sent me some jerky. I traded him for some green chili one time, man. He made some great, great jerky. But he's a real good guy, man. Uh, you guys check out his channel. If you want some good recipes on, uh, on right. cooking, check him out. Real real good guy. He fishes the James River, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. fished with Luke uh, at least once, I know, for garfish. Yeah. I, I like watching that channel. James Lamb, Jason Lamb, there's a Money River catfishing sticker on the back of my new truck. Right on, brother. Thank yeah. you so much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Maurice said, uh, Chris, I'm still waiting on a 10-foot rod. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to I had to decide between uh, a long bank bank rod or, or a medium action. And I kind of went with the medium action instead, uh, mainly because I could use uh, – during the month of, Ju of June, when the fish are spawning – on my guides out here, we're all fishing with these medium heavy rods, and they're catching these little one, two, one through five yeah. pound fish. That's what I, I was telling. Them. Everybody's perfect for Elston. Yeah, yeah, for old Elston over there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chris is the one that really got me into flathead fishing. I copied his floats in my own way and landed my PB flathead on it. That's awesome, man! Pond River boys, yeah. I mean, you can't beat that float fishing, man. I mean, you got a little, got that little bobber floating around, and like the ones mm -hmm. we use, we put glow sticks on, and you're seeing, you're just watching that thing at night, almost hypnotic of, you know, just watching. All of a sudden, it just it's gone, and your your drags running, and adrenaline rush right there. Man. I haven't caught one on a bobber yet, but I've only tried yeah. one. <laughs> you gotta try it. The, the bobber fishing. What's happening is your bait is it's floating around, so it's covering mm -hmm. more water. It's presenting. It's, pre it's presenting the bait to more of an area than if you're just anchored in one spot with, you know, bottom fishing. Yeah, I um, I do mostly dragging. Um, yeah. I drag, I drag like sand flats and stuff. So I don't really get yeah. to use the bobber that much. But this year, I have fished our river a lot more. Um, you know, my dad brought me up on the river, and that's where we used to catch everything. We used to be, uh, or we still are. We catch a lot of you know shell cracker and brim and stuff like that so uh, yeah. matt baker said uh chris was one of the first people i met at the conference i had everyone sign a shirt for me uh and chris in front of the center of the shirt best guy i ever talked to look at that thank you man thank you i appreciate that very much chavez said i have a great big muddy river sticker in my truck now, window now. <laughs> Hagen awesome, Grubb man. stopped by to say, what's up, Kevin, and the famous Chris Flores. I'm a big fan. Thank you, Kay. Thank you, Hagen. I appreciate that. We got a, we got somebody else in. Uh, she told me she was sleeping. So I guess she, she got up because she really wanted to, to say hey to you. So uh, a, a brand, like when I talk about brand new, I'm talking about brand spanking new YouTuber. Just started like a few weeks ago. Miss Betty Jean Cross. Hi. Hi, Betty. How are you? Oh, I'm doing just fine. I just recently subbed to your channel. I seen that. You popped in on one of my lives. Totally shocked me. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for waking up. <laughs> yeah, thank you for waking up and joining us tonight. No problem, no problem. Hey, I just wanted to let you know, um, recently stumbled across um, your video. I think it's actually a couple years old um, about flatheads and your realization of taking those. Oh, and that, yeah. That, that hit me hard. Um, we don't have a whole lot in my area. Um, I live in Ohio, so we can go to the river, but it's an hour and a half for me. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a big deal to me. I'm huge on the CPR, especially on the big fish. So, um, that, that one hit hard for me. That was a great, great video. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. That video, I was actually camping around. I was camping with, uh, with Drew. If you guys know Drew from my videos, it was, it was, uh, him and his daughter and we were, we were at camp and we were hanging out and I was sitting in my chair, just relaxing doing nothing thinking of nothing all of a sudden it hit me like a ton of bricks like i gotta go make this video right now i don't know why or what and i told drew i said hey i gotta go make a video if you don't mind i gotta go do it by myself because it's it's pretty serious i i can't have your daughter there kind of like you know it, it has to be focused right and uh he's like yeah i understand so i took off and i tied up my my, my boat and i threw my lines out and i started filming and uh started speaking from the heart and it was like, I don't know, it was like all oh, the planet aligned or something. And right as I was said flathead, boom, my rod goes down. I land this big old flathead in the video. It yeah. was, I don't know, I, I can't even explain it, but it all worked out perfectly. And uh, one of the, I guess the message for me was the flatheads. And, and it was that, that was the example, but I think it applies to any fish in general. So, exactly. I mean, in over harvesting, you know, you can, you can really impact in a negative way your waterways. So, but I really appreciate you, Betty Jean, for jumping in and, and uh, no, talking to me. No, I appreciate you. Thanks for having me, Kevin. No problem. All right. Thanks I for coming in. Hey, in good. Morning. I'm going I know. Good luck on your fishing trip tomorrow. <laughs> good All luck. Right, I'll guys, be jumping in when I get a chance on your live feed. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, you guys are I, awesome, I, I enjoy her live streams. You know, she she's just starting out, and um, you know learning about camera angles and, and you know, it's really hard to keep up a conversation in a live stream and she's doing yeah. really good for, I like, I remember when I did my first live stream, I was tripping up on everything and, and Betty right. Jean, you know, she's, she's a natural. She's going to be awesome. And it's good, to see, too, it's good to see a, a lady come in um, because, you know, like uh, Patriot James says all the time, they're underrepresented in the catfish community. Right. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. We definitely need more women in the sport. Mm-hmm. For sure. Catfish and crappy. Uh, Chris and Issa treated me awesome at CatCon number two. We chatted for a little bit, and I still remember that to this day. Thank you, man. I appreciate he, that. He's got a new new channel too, and he's been sending people those awesome hats. I mean, they've been buying them from him. I don't know <laughs> what he wants. <laughs> 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 I remember watching Muddy River videos back when I was in high school when he first started. How old does that make you feel? <laughs> you know, I tell you what, man, it kind of took the wind out of my sail one time when I, I met somebody. He says, "Man, I grew up watching your videos." I said, Wait a minute, <laughs> how long have I been doing this YouTube thing? <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, you I guess eight years, man. Eight years is a long yeah. time. You take a twelve-year-old kid, and you know, they're twenty years old now. Like, wow. I mean, that's yeah, that's high it. school and an undergraduate degree. You know, I mean, that's you think about it, they get a diplo- two diplomas in that time. So that is a long time if you think about it. I could have I could have graduated college instead of making YouTube videos, man. God, hey, I could have had a degree. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, man. Uh, Richard Ward, I, I have a flathead. <laughs> I have a flathead rod that Chris signed, and I just can't bring myself to use it. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Rich. I appreciate that, man. Listen, I'm going to do a quick new segment on the show. I Another idea I came up with today, um, you know, just meditating on some things. And one of them was to surprise you today. So if everybody doesn't get to come in, it's not because they didn't want to. It's because I just about an hour ago, literally, I came up with the idea to surprise you. So, um, 
So uh, there's, I'm, I'm sure there's thousands of people out there that would love to come in here and, and tell you how they think, um, what they think of you. But an, another segment I want to come up with is I just want to give a shout out to a YouTube channel every weekend. And I want to start that tonight um, just because I, I want to build people up. There's so much negativity going on. And I even watched your video after the cat, cat con. I don't remember which one it was. Oh, and you and Steve Douglas were on his boat and y'all were talking about the negative things that were going on that weekend um, and leading up to it. And there's so many negative things going on. I just want to highlight a YouTube channel of the week that I find myself looking forward to. Um, and that's uh, Kentucky Catfishing, Mr. Cody Abney. Um, I asked him to come in tonight. Chris was one of the first people I started watching him and Steve, uh, which is the same for me. Wish I could come out, come live, but out on the riverbank trying to catch a monster just like Chris. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you catch that monster tonight, man. Yeah, he's doing he's doing great. His videos are getting better and better. Um, and I look forward to to everyone he comes out with. He's a he's a young father, and you know he's trying to do the best he can, and he really loves fishing. So I love to watch anybody who really loves what they're doing, no matter what they're catching. And, uh, you know, his edit, his edits are getting better and he's getting more and more confident. So I just want to send a shout out to Cody from Kentucky catfishing. Um, Chad, you know what to do. Post the link in there. If you haven't go sub to, uh, Cody go sub. Let's see. Um, where's James Dockery? I don't know. Um, Hey, look at that. Isabel Flores. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> She's watching. That's awesome. And let me that tell you, awesome. that, that last video she did with you, man, at the end, you were trying to get people to cry, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's tough when they grow up, man. I still, like I tell her all the time, when she gets mad, I go, you're still 12. <laughs> She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> so I still see you as a 12-year-old. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, no, she, she's, you know, I couldn't ask for a better daughter. She's, she's been a blessing to me and, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy for her and, and her new life and her new uh, venture uh, moving to Tennessee. It's just the way I see it. I, I'm going to have to go at least once a month to inspect the dams, make sure that, uh, you know, everything's good. Not, for, her know, safety, <laughs> for her safety, for her safety, exactly for her safety, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm hoping to at least get out there, uh, even even if it's uh, on my way to the catfish conference, I'll stop by and uh, and then I got I got friends in that area too and uh, we can go do some fishing and at least maybe get some video out of it and make some memories and have some fun, you know. That's right. That's right. Tim Molina says nobody wants to see me live, but I wanted to say Chris has been a big impact on my life and turned out to be a great friend. Thanks for taking time and having the patience to put up with me. Uh, Tim's a great guy, man. We we have he's one of my 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 regulars on uh, my fishing guide service, and we mm -hmm. we become friends throughout. And uh, he he challenged me to uh, I don't know if you saw that video where uh, I did a wheel wheelchair modification. No, I hadn't seen that one. Yeah, if you get a chance, check that out. He he had seen Luke's video uh, where Luke customized a, a wheelchair and, and uh, put some yeah, eye holders and stuff. Yep, and, made it. Yep. And, and so Tim, he's like, man, if I know anybody that could do that, I know it's you. So I'll bring <laughs> you in my wheelchair. I said, bring it on, man. Let's do this. So it came out pretty cool, man. I put, I put all kinds of cool stuff on it and uh, he's been, he's pretty happy with it. And um, it was, it worked out perfect because uh, the day that I gave it to him, I ended up just having that day to give it to him was his birthday. So it all lined up. I gave him the chair. We went, fishing he caught some fish it was just an awesome time man yeah he's a real cool guy i'm gonna go check that video out hey listen y'all i'm i'm i was trying to hold up chat just so i can get everybody's comments in but uh, i don't want to miss anybody that maybe only has a few minutes so if i hadn't put your uh, i'm back caught up now because i skipped over a bunch if you have something that you wanted to say to chris go ahead and retype it and i'll get it out there uh chavez said he saw that video um, that video with Issa jerked the knot inside of me. I want to keep my daughter forever, but I'll enjoy, uh, her before she grows up too much. 
<laughs> Make those memories, man. That's uh, I think that's one of the things that I've pushed the most uh, just throughout my my YouTube channel is uh, spending time with your kids. You know, um, it's there's so many lifestyles and mentalities and stuff like that. I actually had a guy one time message me and he says, man, you know what? Your videos uh, until I started watching your videos, I grew up thinking fishing is is a guy thing. You go with the guys and you drink some beers and you you hang out on the bank and whatever. And it's not, it's not with the family, you know, he says, but then I saw you out there with your daughter and I saw you with your son. And, and I, I woke up like, man, why, why am I not doing this with, with my kids? He says, you know what? That change was the best change I ever did. And it's because of your videos. So um, one thing that I've learned is there's two kinds of fishing. There's fishing with the kids and there's fishing the way you want to fish. And yeah. when you're with the kids, if they want to, if they want to be on the boat and fish for, you know, an hour and then they get bored and they want to do something, take them, man. Have fun. You know, it's not always about that catching that fish. It's more about making sure you're having fun with the kids. They're going to want to enjoy it and come back the next time. And, and uh, you know, if, if you're there, we're real stickler. No, we're going to stay here. and We're not moving because we just got here and we're fishing and they get bored and they're not having fun. And next thing you know, they don't want to come next time. And then you're out there by yourself kind of wishing they were there and, you know. So yeah, make time for your kids and have that kid fishing time, but also do your own thing the way you're going to do it. So there, like I said, there's those two kinds of fishing. Yeah, you got to be okay with letting go. You got to be, and I'm not a father, um, but I I've seen I'm a I'm in education. I'm an assistant principal, so I have like 650 kids, you could say. But I, you know, sometimes you just got to let go, and you got to let them be them like right. out on the water you just gotta you know if they want to do something and it's not the way you do it but it's a way right. to do it you gotta let right. them do it because yeah. otherwise they're not gonna build that love for fishing that you want them to have right you don't feel like you forcing them on it uh the right. it on them yeah um let's see yep yeah. uh tim said i have the only chair of monster rod holders <laughs> <That's right. laughs> yep <laughs> i gotta go check i'm gonna watch it tonight before i go to sleep just wanted to say to all you youtubers are the reason i am who i am in the catfishing world chris kevin elston luke norm everyone even chad even chad <laughs> <laughs> thank you man john patrick the third it was just me and my oldest daughter fishing when she caught her first two catfish and i think i was more excited than she was yeah that's right man it's always it's you're just watching them you know that's part of uh that's part of why I enjoy having my guide services. I, I see these kids catch the, you know, their personal best fish and they're just so happy and their parents are so proud and, you know, or eat it. And then the other thing is age is it doesn't matter what, you know, I see guys that are like 60, 70 years old and they catch the biggest fish of their life. And it's the same reaction. It doesn't matter how old you are. And for me, that's the best feeling in the world, you know, knowing that I could help make that possible. Yeah. My dad and I, uh, you know, we've always fished together, but I think now as a man and I'm taking, we're, we're reconnecting through catfishing and, and I'm sure he feels that too. We don't, we don't really talk about it because we're men and you know, you don't talk about feelings, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, right. but I, he knows how much I love fishing with him and I know that he enjoys fishing with me, but that, that connection that you build through fishing, it, it's one of the few things that you can do with a family member and you don't have to say much. Right. You know, just the excitement of reeling in that fish or just being there, sitting there, watching the rods together, waiting on yeah. it to go down. You know, you don't have to say much. Yeah. You don't have to create things to talk about. There's tons to talk about when you're fishing. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, Avid Fisherman, who goes live on Fridays, Chris Flores' videos has shown me new ways to target flatheads and shown me more about my birth state where I was raised. Hey, hey, nice, Avid. Thank you, man. I didn't know. Uh, I didn't know you were from New Mexico. I didn't either. I guess that's what he was talking about. Uh, one over outdoors. I try to put my kids in my videos as much as possible, and he does. I know that. I watch all of them. Uh, you're welcome, buddy. Norm's not in here tonight. Okay, he's talking to Chad. All right. How long have you lived in New Mexico? Your whole life. I was born and raised here, uh, New Mexico, pretty much. I did move out of out of town. My dad worked for the oil fields from from my from when I was five to uh, fifteen, and we lived in West Texas. 
I lived in little bitty oil towns in West Texas, Andrews, Texas, and Denver City, Texas. And uh, I was there for those 10 years, and then we moved back, and I've been here ever since. So New, Me- New Mexico's home, right? Other than Tennessee? That- <laughs> in a few months? <laughs> Uh-oh, he froze up. All right, y'all. I froze up. Hopefully, he'll come back in. There he is. Yeah. All right. All right. He must have got a message or something. I don't know what happened. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, How did you get? Um. How? Oh, we already talked about. I was going to say, how did you convince Steven to get in that float? (laughs) (laughs) Because I I just every time, every time I see a bigger guy doing things that I wouldn't do, I'm always like. Well, how did how did how did that how did he get talked into? That? I just saw him. You ready to catch the biggest flathead of your life, man? There you go. There, there's there's your transportation. Let's go. That's right. <laughs> Don Engel, new in the channel tonight. Once you meet Chris, it's like you've known him for a lifetime. He has a beautiful family. Loves seeing those kids smile and get excited. He always takes time for anyone and everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Don. Dawn is a great person. I know her. She's she's from here locally. Okay. And uh, I've got to meet her and uh, and fish with her a little bit. And uh, she's always, always, always considerate, always offering me bait or if I need this or if I need that. Very loving, caring person. Thank you, Dawn, for all you do for me. I greatly appreciate you. Awesome. Here's the guy I was talking about earlier. My hero, Chris, PD Fishing Joe. <laughs> How you doing, man? Thank you, brother. <laughs> Mr. Gadget Fishing, Chris, what's the one thing that's happened when fishing that you will never forget, good, bad, or ugly? And the one thing that's a tough one. Ah, uh, one thing that's happened. Hmm. There's a few things, but I think the one thing that that really kind of impacted me was uh, after my daughter kind of started going her own way, her separate way. Uh, I mean, all these years of fishing together and making memories and, you know, like I told you, my, my channel has always been about making memories and stuff like that. and uh, Capturing those experiences that I have with, whether it be friends that I take fishing or, or family or, you know, so that way uh, years from now, they can look back and remember the good times that they had with me. Um, I'll never forget that uh, there was a trip that I took on my little stretch of Muddy River with my daughter, and I remember her. She was uh, she was telling me about the stars and stuff. She's like, "Dad, look at the stars!" And uh, you know, oh, I see something moving like a UFO. And you know, I'm the dad, kind of, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, uh huh. And I'm waiting for that bite. You know, I want to catch that fish. You know, I have her there, but. I wasn't really focused on her on that time, you know. I was I was focused on catching that fish, and then um, that that little instance at that moment never it didn't even didn't even phase me, you know. I was just nothing, you know, whatever. And then uh, she grew she grew up on me. She moved out. She went to live in Texas, and I decided to go fishing by myself. I said, yeah, you know. I'll, I'll go out, do some fishing. I went to the same spot by myself, camping by myself. And I went, launched the boat, went out in the dark to that same little area, set up, put my line out. Boom. Caught that monster that I was looking for, right? Mm. Boom. So excited, reeling in this fish. I grab it, pull it out. And there's no one there to share it with me, you know? And uh, it was a real bummer, just kind of like, man. So I unhooked that fish, let it go, and uh, I didn't even cast my line out. I just laid down on my boat, and I looked at the stars. And I saw what she was talking about. There was some mm-hmm. little thing moving around, and it was cool. And at the same time, it was like kind of like a slap in the face, like, man, you should have paid more attention, you know? But, yeah, that's why that's why I really try to emphasize spending time with your kids and making those memories and uh, you know because they they grow up and they move away. 
what she's saying right here. Said, on a child side, fishing with my dad, our memories I'll never forget. Thank you, Issa. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, you just you, you nailed it on the head. And I again I'm not a father, but I find myself doing that, you know, with friends and family yeah. and my wife. You know, you you sit there and you think about like you reflect on what's going on and then you think oh wow that maybe was a moment right you know? i do it with my faith all the time you know when i meet people and see that they're going through a hard time and i didn't say something i didn't tell them about jesus and i'm like man that was that was it that was god telling me hey kevin yeah. wake up right. son <laughs> you know so right. I, I feel you in a different way you know, yeah. I, I feel you on a different level. <laughs> this guy is going to make me cry. <laughs> 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 but yeah. All right. So which one of your fishing vessels do you enjoy fishing off the most? I know you got a couple little boats. Um, you got the tube there and then you got the big, uh, the flat boat, right? Man. Right off they're, of. Yeah. They're, uh, it's, I think they each have their own little purpose, you know, uh, like if I had to just pick one and run with it, and like if just get rid of everything and save one, it'd probably be the little boat. Cause that little boat can get me back into places that man, just not, not anybody can get to. Right. And you gotta be sem semi crazy to get to some of the places that <laughs> I go to. Seems like it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that little boat will get you there. Alex. My Alex says wife. he loves his daddy. <laughs> I love you, Alex. That's 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 my fishing buddy right there, man. He he's uh I don't know if you guys saw that he caught that forty two pound catfish uh, last November and uh, mm -hmm. he he likes to remind me about that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, you catch one bigger than mine yet? No, nope. not yet. Yeah. I okay, so, so. <laughs> that, listen, you just, it's kind of like you read my mind. I'm going to, that leads me into another question. <laughs> yeah. What, what are your thoughts? And I can't, I can't even find how I worded it. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Uh, okay. Well, I, I know what I meant. So like you guide a lot, right? And so have you ever been in that instance where a customer is catching a monster fish and you're like, I wish I was reeling that fish. <laughs> For instance, like uh, I just, I just took a buddy out. Yeah, and, um, I just yeah. took a buddy out, and he just pulled in like a forty pound fish, and and right. I'm like, dang it, man! Why, why, why would I? <laughs> yeah, I get you, man. I uh, the thing with me, and I don't know how to word it without sounding, you know. But I mean, truth be told, and it's it, the it, the fact is, I've caught a lot of big fish. Yeah, you know. You have. I've caught a lot of big fish, man. And and uh, while I always enjoy catching a big fish, I know that I can always catch a big fish, you know? So if I have a client on the boat and they're catching a big fish, I don't care if it's a state record. I don't care what it is. I'm happy for them at that moment that they're catching that fish. That's their fish. And I am I couldn't be more excited about it, you know, just that it's happening. And they're having that experience in that moment, you know? So, yeah, I've never been uh, – where, because oh, they're man. gonna go, they're gonna go and talk about it, and they're gonna say, "Man, Chris Flores put me on this big fish, just made my whole day or my year or my month." Yeah. So yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not even about that, really, for me. You know, I don't, I don't want, I don't see it past that moment. But no, you know, I'm not I don't talking about. It. Yeah, no, don't misunderstand me. Like they're not. I'm not saying you're yeah. getting promotion out of it. I'm saying right. you get that feeling that they're so happy that they're gonna go and tell right. the whole world. That yeah. I caught this big fish, and and right. you know, so you get that yeah. feeling that you made that memory for them. Right. Yeah, it's always a good feeling, man. When, like I said today, that little kid uh, on the boat, man, uh, Jojo, if you're watching, shout out, brother. Uh, it was awesome having you and your family on the boat, and uh, he caught his personal best. He caught an 18 pound blue cat today, and man, he was just over the moon. And man, I I just love that. I just love being a part of that. You know. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Um, so when are you going to have a rematch with Luke? Oh, man, we need to. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did that challenge. When that 
I actually came up with that idea and I, I wanted to do a three-way challenge. It was going to be me, Luke, and Steve. Okay. And uh, so what we were going to do is we were going to do uh, like me versus Luke and then, and then the winner takes on Steve or something like that. But we just couldn't get Steve on board. He was really busy. He's always, I mean, that guy, I think I'm busy, he's but I'm not as busy as you are. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, Steve's the kind of guy that, you know, I, we're friends and I consider us close friends. And I, if I call him on a Monday, he'll return my call like maybe two Mondays later, you know, like, hey, Chris, you call me? <laughs> so, yeah. I forgot what I needed, Steve. But yeah, thanks for calling me back, you know, but yeah, he's a great guy. But uh, so that's how that all kind of went, went to, uh, you know, I came up with that idea. Steve could he just it wasn't the right time for him. I'm sure Steve would have smoked his boat, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> it, it was fun, man. Uh, I called up Luke, and he's like, "Yeah, let's do it." And so it worked out. But yeah, we need to do another challenge for sure. Yeah, I, that was like uh, uh, when I was doing research. You know, I, you and Luke both have like hundreds of videos. So you know, I I just started YouTube like a year and a half ago. I just started watching everybody. So I'm really late to the game. So I'm trying to catch up. And, um, you know, when you type in catfish, Luke's name just pops up. But <laughs> you yeah. and Luke are like the most popular videos, you I, and Steve. So, um, but then I saw, I saw that you did that challenge with him. And then I was talking with uh, Michael Murillo and he said, man, you need to do that. You need to issue a challenge. So I, I got started, get, uh, started me thinking, hey, man, maybe I should mention that to Chris. <laughs> like you, you and Luke need to have that rematch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we need to put that together, man. Make it happen. Um, so you you're you're you said it yourself, you're super busy. How many jobs do you have? Like you have the YouTube, you got the <laughs> guiding service. <laughs> yeah, so I'm a general contractor by trade. So uh usually Monday through Friday I'm tearing up someone's kitchen or building somebody's uh, remodeling someone's bathroom or whatever, right? And then uh oh. <laughs> you know, Am hey, I there? You're Maybe? Back. Yeah. You're back now. So on the, on the weekends, I'm guiding. And then uh, I still have my online store. So I'm selling rods and shirts and, and uh, bobbers and whatnot. And uh, it's just, uh, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I've been looking on eBay for a cloning machine, but I, I can't <laughs> find it. <laughs> You guys got any links then? Put the link for the cloning machine down there, please. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, let's see, John Patrick. I have memories of fishing with my dad when I was just uh, when I was young. So now I'm glad to take my girls fishing and love watching them catch catfish. That is awesome, John. That is awesome. Chris and Luke Catfish Conference Pioneers. <laughs> three legends. Michael Murillo said the three legends. Uh, on on TV are Bill Dance, Roland Martin, and Jimmy Houston. The three legends on YouTube are Steve Douglas, Chris Flores, and Luke Nichols. <laughs> wow, Michael, that's man, that's a big uh, compliment right there. Yeah, you put me with those big names, man. I appreciate that very much. I've I've never felt like that personally. I've always just felt like a guy who loves to fish and uh, just sharing what what knowledge I I know or acquire or you know, and then just just my experiences, you know, and. Uh, but uh, I really appreciate you guys putting me in that kind of category. It's, it's an honor. So what innovations do you think have happened in the, in the world of catfishing that you could not go without? Man. I mean, there's a, there's a bunch, but like, you know, the one that comes to mind is like a good rod holder, like a, a really yeah. good rod holder. And I have Steve's rod holders on my boats and my boat. And I couldn't imagine doing what I do without that strong right. holder. Freezing up. I'm, I'm going to get out there. He'll be back in a minute, everyone. Am I there? There he is. You're there. Uh, Alex yeah, says I, I, he loves you, Daddy. <laughs> I love you. I love you, Alex. Thank you for watching. But man, there's so much, you know, when because my videos come from simplicity, right? 
uh, if you watch like my early stuff, it's it's real simple. I mean, it's a hook and a lead, and uh, and there's other stuff coming up. And everything that I use, I believe in. You know, I don't just use stuff because it's it's gimmicky or it's this or that or whatever. I I see the value in it, and uh, so there's you know like dragging rigs and the float the floats that I use and stuff like that because it does produce fish. Uh, there's always been arguments that all you need is a hook and a lead. True. I mean, you can take a hook and a lead and go catch Simplest fish. form. Yep. But if you apply these other methods, you could probably catch more fish. You know, there's a, there's a time and a place for things, you know, and uh, there's time there's certain places that I'll go and that's all I use is a lead and a hook. But there's other times that I'm using dragon weights and demon dragons and planer boards and, you know, or floats and slip, slip, slip sinkers or, or slip, you know, all that stuff. So yeah, the, it's come a long way, uh, and I believe that it's going to get even more so. You know, uh, it's cat. I never realized that catfishing could could get to that extent. You know, when I when I first started my YouTube channel, I was like, man, I made I think I made like my tenth video, and I'm like, well, what do I do now? I think I'm pretty much <laughs> done it all. You know. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, it's it's evolved, man, and, it, and it, it'll continue to evolve. So I got you, I got you. Um, so what what YouTube channels? I mean, do you get a chance to watch other YouTube channels, or are you just so busy that you really really don't get a chance to? You know, I'm so busy that I really don't have time to sit and watch a full video. So lately, what I've been doing is I kind of jump into these little live streams uh, yeah. just to just to say hello or, or, or just to show, you know, my support. And gotcha. if I can hang on in there a little bit, I will. But a lot of times it's like, uh, like the only time that I have is when I'm home and I'm relaxing. But at that time, it's usually hey dad or, Hey, you know, or so I'll jump in. I'm like, Hey, i stand or Hey kid, what's up guys. Or, and then, Hey dad, can you, all right, well, gotta go. So I got to put that family time in there too. And, yeah. uh, so, yeah, it, it, it's tough, man. It's tough, but uh, I do like to get in there and show my support when I can. Well, hey, man, we're we're right at the hour uh, hour mark. There was a few more people that I thought were going to come in. Um, but, you know, again, it's my fault. I didn't come up with the idea until too late. Yeah. But, I, you know, I really wanted to show you, um, you know, I told you that on the phone that, you know, a lot of people look up to you. A lot of people watch you and they have a lot of respect for you. So I wanted to show you that in even the smallest way that I could. And so, uh, you know, you're appreciated, Chris. Thank you, man. That, that is awesome of you. And uh, if you have to go, that's fine with me. I'm stuck in a hotel room with nothing to do. So uh, no, I don't have to go. <laughs> it's up to you, man. I, we can keep going. Long, or As long as my wife doesn't care, I'll sit in here and talk to you all night, man. <laughs> <laughs> when you get the look, you let me know, man. We'll cut it off. <laughs> when she peeks in and says, "Hey," uh, <laughs> she she'll, she'll probably fall asleep on the couch. She's in here right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. I'll, I'll ask you the rest of these questions, man. Uh, what's the What's the hardest part about being a guide? Just producing, man. You gotta You gotta be on top of those fish. I mean, you know, everybody's different. Me personally. I don't want people's money if I don't have the confidence that I'm going to at least know where the fish are at and try to get them on a fish. You know, I'm not like if I haven't fished in a month, I won't book a trip until I go out there myself and scout and, and gotcha. find a few fish. I would I would never wing it and just say, all right, let's go see what we do. And uh, oh, well, man, you know, we didn't do that great, but pay me. I'm not that kind of guy. I'd rather say, you know what? Keep your money, man. I, you know, this was a scouting trip, and uh, we sucked at it. And you know, I'm sorry. I, I just I can I'm see you doing trip. that. I can so <laughs> see you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so Lisa said, "Dad, tell the story about when the fishing rod flew into the water and you dived in after it, and I freaked <laughs> out because of that pool in the water." Oh, <laughs> uh, so at this camping spot uh, that I that I, I call it the spot. I have I have places. I'll, all my fishing spots have names. Even this whole stretch of river that I fish, it had each section has its own name. Hmm. And uh, so we were fishing at the spot, which I call the spot. And uh, 
one of my rules about that has always been is before you unload, before you set up the camp, you put a fishing rod out. It's the first thing you do. You cast the line out. And normally I'll put the boat in and then put the rods in the rod holder. And I thought, nah, I'll just put a fork stick in, good old fashioned way, throw a line out, and uh, it will do that. And uh, so got the rods, got the bait, found a fork stick, stuck it in the mud, threw the line out, set it up. And me and Issa started unloading the truck. And as, as I'm coming back down towards camp, I see the rods bending, right? As I start running over there, <laughs> and that rod's doing this, all of a sudden it does this. And it's sitting on that fork stick going like this. <laughs> and the fish pulls it through the fork stick, and it goes flying. And I jump in the air just straight into the river, and I almost grabbed the handle, and I felt something grab my shorts. And, <laughs> and there was this branch there, and it punctured my shorts, and I was hanging on it. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> just like, like in midair, I, I was stuck there, and the rod disappeared. And, He's just freaking out, thinking I got stabbed in my stomach or something. But it was, it was just my shorts that got hung up. <laughs> yeah, it was a it was a funny story. Yeah, good good memories. I should have set the camera up and then threw the rod. Yeah, man. Shoot, that would have been on your your blooper reels, man. So I got to go ahead. I can hang out as long as I want. <laughs> yeah, all right, thank you. Hey, man. So this last trip, my last fishing trip was um, Friday morning. Uh, so yesterday morning and uh, I'm not going to ruin the video because the video is going to be awesome, but a big one got away and it was my own fault. Uh, it hurt me deeply. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> This thing had to be massive and I bet I'm still waiting on my big, big, you know, big is relative. Right. Right. Um, right. But you know, I, I'm, I haven't caught one over 50 yet. And yeah. so I'm, I'm waiting on my big fish. Tell me about, and everyone's got one. Tell me about the one that got away. Oh man. I still have nightmares about that. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, this was back when I had that old, uh, that old uh, nitro bass boat. And uh, I would shoot across the lake and we would camp on the opposite, opposite side of the lake. And I, uh, there was this one spot that I really liked to fish. It was a, it was about a six foot drop off this rocky, rocky area ledge. And it would, it would go down and, and it would transition at 26 foot right into like a sandy, just a sandy bottom. And I would, I would always fish that little transition area right there. So uh, I went out there one day, I said, I'm going big or going home. I took a whole gizzard shad and I just cut the tail off. And I put a big old chunk of bait like this. Wow. There and I threw it out and, uh, it was me and my dad were, were camping, and uh, I set I stuck my rods in the in the cracks in the rocks, and uh, we went to sleep. And I'm it's summertime, so I'm just sleeping on a sleeping bag on the rocks right there. And I remember about four in the morning, my bell is ringing like crazy, just bling, 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 bling. I jump up, I grab that rod, and I go to set the hook, and I can't pick the rod up past the ninety degree angle. I've never felt I never felt the oh, fish. Oh, because it was so big. Okay. Yeah, I've never felt the fish so heavy that I couldn't even pick the rod up. You know, wow. I, I I couldn't move that that rod was out straight and I I couldn't pick it up. Wow. And my line just starts spooling. It's just wow. So I yell at my dad. I go, Dad, I got a big one. And like you said, big one is relative, right? When I say a big fish, all right, I mean like this is probably state record stuff, man. You know. And my dad's the guy, he's probably got a big fish, like five, 10 pounds or something. I go, dad, get the net, hurry, get the net. So this fish is fooling me. It, it hasn't stopped. It's just pulling my line. I look over at my dad and he's kind of lollygagging over to get the net. <laughs> then he gets to the boat, he gets in, the net's tangled with the fishing rod lures oh. and stuff. And I'm just like, oh my God. And I'm looking at my spools just shrinking, right? And I'm like, oh my God, this thing's going to spool me. And he's all of a sudden, he turns, and I start reeling on him, and I'm fighting him. He's coming in, but I'm still not being able to pick that rod up. I'm just kind of doing this, and uh, he's coming in, and he's, he runs out again. We do this back and forth about, I don't know, three, four times, and uh, I look back, and my dad's still uh, fumbling with the net, and finally, I get that fish that he's about, I don't know, maybe 
uh, five foot off the bank, but I, I can't see him. But the water turns, and I, I mean, it is this huge splash. I, I never saw the fish, but he splashed. And I was at that instant, I looked at my dad, and he's he, there. I'm like, I'm not getting in the net. And that fish is right here. I almost jumped off that <laughs> cliff and just try to bear hug that fish or something. I didn't uh -huh. care if I broke an ankle or so, whatever. I, I was right about to jump and he, he took off again. So my line's going, and then he dove and hung a hard right. And he went under a cliff and he, I could mm -hmm. feel my brake going click, 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 click. And I tried to open the bell and boom, gone. I'm sure everybody on the opposite end of the lake heard me yelling. <laughs> I almost threw my rod in the water. I was so bummed maybe, out. Man. Maybe some expletives in there. <laughs> no, it was just a no. Oh, <laughs> it was a loud man. no, like uh, at the end of a movie somewhere. <laughs> but yeah, that was that was the one that got away. Biggest fish I've ever tangled with. Even he fought harder than those alligator guys that we caught over there in uh, Corpus Christi. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, you got farther than I did. I didn't get that far with this one the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and tell you now. It was a it was a frayed leader line, and I just told my buddy. I said, "Hey, look at that leader, man. It's frayed. You know, if if a big one hits it, it's not hanging on." And so I just throw it in the water because I got six rods out. What are the what are the uh, what are the uh, odds? And yeah. then this one, you know, it's a GX two, which I know you fished with those in the past. It bent over. Yeah. You know, I'm fun with my phone so he can film it and, and it turns and I'm reeling in and then I'm starting to talk to the camera and all of a sudden it goes uh, zzz, pow, and pops. Oh, man. And just the just the weight of it. Like I felt the weight of like you said of the fish. Yeah, oh, man, I, I told him, I said, I hate myself so much right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, uh, we stayed on and, and look, we got blessed. We got another person that wants to come in. And say hey to you, and 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 just say some kind words to you, Mister Kevin from K and B Anglers. What's up, Kev? What's going on, guys? How's it going, man? Hey, what's going on, Chris? Yeah, I hated that when they get earlier. I uh, I had a wedding shower. Um, a long story, but I had to go to it. So I was uh I was out of range, couldn't get in, couldn't get away. So finally, when I got back, and I right. saw you guys live. I was like, oh yeah, I got to, I got to say hey to Chris. <laughs> thanks for jumping in man i appreciate you brother no doubt man yeah I, I i was enjoying the story that you was just telling man that was pretty awesome <laughs> i know where that fish lives man i need to go back and pay him a visit hey, yeah you, you need go. to do a video of that story like I did. oh yeah cool, yeah some cool music in the background oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so thanks, KB. I know Pop wanted to wanted to say something too, but he is out, um, you know, at the lake and he doesn't get service. So, out of yeah. service. So plus, they had a storm earlier tonight too, so it it throws the service completely out out there where he's at right now. And um, that's, yeah, he's up on the lake property, so it's I, I can attest to the fact that there's not a whole lot of uh, even though I did see that he was able to get in on on the uh, chat a little bit a while ago. Um, mm. He's but, in uh, there. He I was going to say he actually called. I, I can't see chat right now with the way I got everything set up. So, but he actually called me and, and he was like, um, he, he was like, uh, Hey, well, he, he takes me he's like, Oh, important. Call me, call me. And <laughs> so I called him and he's like, uh, I just, you know, I just got this notification that Chris is going to be on Palmetto. And, you know, he said, he said he's something about, you know, wanting us to come on and everything. And I was like, yeah, that's cool. I said, but, um, I'm at a wedding shower. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like well i can't go on he's like i was hoping maybe you could <laughs> well, i appreciate uh, you yeah, taking man. the time man i appreciate all you do oh yeah man i, I tell you um you know I've, I've said it before i've said it again you know you were one of the first ones that you know pop and i started watching well i started watching and i got popped in on it of course you know after i taught him how to use uh, youtube and um yeah you inspired us to do what we do. And because of that inspiration, you, you know, we appreciate you. You know what I'm saying? So just want to let you know that that's the reason I want to go ahead and jump on here while you guys were still live. Um, just to let you know, man, you touch a lot of people that you may not realize. And we all appreciate what you do for us, man. Thank you very much, man. I appreciate your kind words. Hey man, yeah, thanks no for taking the time out, man. Appreciate it going out of your way. 
No problem, buddy. No problem. I'm going to let y'all get back at it. I'm going to go ahead and leave out. Like I said, I just right, got bud. home, brother. I'll talk to y'all right. later. See you. Right. See you, Chris. Take All care, right. brother. And I got That's one more lined up from you. You ready for right. another one? I'm ready. Bring it on, man. All right, man. This is this is this is one that I never thought would happen, but hey, he's here for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a the man right stuff. there. <laughs> fishing, fishing and stuff. Fishing and stuff today. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, had up, on, I had to come on and talk to Chris. He's a, he was one of my favorite YouTubers back when I first started watching YouTube. He was just a small channel. Actually, I started watching Luke. I think he had 8,000 subscribers. And the first time I met Chris, he done got big. And he talked to me like he knew me. That's what I was saying in the comment section. And that meant a lot to me. And every year, that was four years ago, every year I go back, Chris talked to me like he knew me. And I was like, he don't know me. <laughs> and, and then I remember the first time he commented on one of my videos. I was so excited, so happy. And this year I went to Catfish Conference, and I thought, maybe he knows who I am this year. And I went over and started talking to him. And I was like, this is a nice rod. And he said, man, put my rod down. You'll make that dang thing. And I was like, oh, <laughs> but you influenced a lot of people, Chris. And I wanted to come on. I ain't never did a live stream. Ain't my thing. Never. But see what I got on. Oh, I've yeah. Been, Chris, Chris I've been these. begging him forever. I've been begging <laughs> him to come on. I wore out three of these already. I wear them to work, and people go, Muddy River Catfishing, where's that at? And I go, it's in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. I appreciate yeah. that, brother. Yeah. I appreciate you. You always, uh, you always inspire. I know. I know. The first time I met you, I thought, man, he's such a nice and humble guy. Like it hadn't gone to his head. Luke's the same way. He talks to everybody like he knows them. And this year, I actually talked to a lot of people at the Catfish Conference, and I thought, man, I hope I don't blow this and do it as good as you guys. <laughs> but <laughs> but y'all always inspire. Y'all the Y'all the legends, catfish legends. Thank you, brother. You're doing awesome as well, man. Your videos are outstanding. The, your editing, uh, just the, man, the, that <laughs> mind you, man. I don't know how you come up with half of this stuff. I thought I'd come up with some pretty cool stuff, man. But, dude, you got it down, man. You got it down to <laughs> the I'm crazy. It's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and everybody in the show, chat, you don't realize we have two of the greatest fabricators in the catfishing world, right? <laughs> yeah. You got more than two. Uh, I talk to Hagen Grubbs a lot. He wells for a living. He's a fabricator, too. Yeah, but, he's in here right now. He says, oh, my gosh, <laughs> he went live. <laughs> <laughs> he knew I wouldn't do it, too. Keith is the man. Yeah, I, I messaged I message Hagen, too. and Maybe he, he'll do it now. He hadn't, he hadn't agreed. It, Hagen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Hagen's blown up, man. He's, he's another one that, you know, kind of reminds me of both of you fellas, you know, just really humble and just goes out there and, and just talks yeah. to the camera and just treats everybody like, Hey, this is what I do. This is who I am. Hope you like yeah. it. <laughs> He's a good guy. He's a good young man. I like watching his videos mm -hmm. and Chris is the legion. I, th <laughs> I think of Chris, I think a chicken liver chum bait. <laughs> That's what my Chris. Fame. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I appreciate you jumping in here, brother. Yes, sir. Send me a picture of that new rod. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. Hey, hey, Keith. I tried to get him to tell. I uh, tried to tell him to make it green, but he, uh, you know, he doesn't know. He won't unleash the color yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I won't tell nobody. You can send me a picture of it. <laughs> hey, well, man, I hope I, I see you at the conference this year, man. Oh, I, I'm planning on going. I was going to go to the Tennessee one and all this COVID stuff happened. Yeah. I was kind of sad about it because it's only four hours from my house. And the Kentucky one's like nine hours away, which ain't. I don't even want to hear about it, man. It's 22 I hours. I ain't nothing for you. Me, 
<laughs> like two, like four days away from you. Isn't it? <laughs> yep. Mm. I, I'll probably be there this year. I'm planning on it. Well, Keith, Look you got a nice comment in there too, buddy. Mark said Keith is as close to a YouTube mentor he has. Oh, he's a nice guy too. He's he's doing good. Yeah, I man. like trying to help everybody. But I know I you, he, you helped me. You were the first one to reach out to me, man. I really appreciate that. Well, I take my cues from Chris. He's the same way. Thank you, man. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you for everything you've done. And I'm going to get out of here because he said five minutes. That's the only reason I did this. <laughs> That's right. <Five> <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Well, thanks. Thanks again. I know. I know you. You don't do this stuff, so it really means a lot. I'm sure it means a lot to Chris too. Yeah. Yes, it does, Thank you very All much. Right, man. Take care. All right. Thank you. That's awesome, man. You guys are yeah, amazing. Man. That's crazy uh, that that he uh, that he did that because I've been begging him for at least six months to do it, and he said, "No, nah, I just." I appreciate it, but that ain't me. You know, that ain't me. <laughs> I got another one for you, man. I got another one racked and ready for you. I hope he's ready. He he looks like it. Hey, Chris, oh. what's up? What's up, Lou? <laughs> We're just talking about you, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. You know, oh, Kevin Kevin told me he was going to do this, and I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. And I was putting the kids down and just – <laughs> stuff happened man it got real <laughs> hey, I came down here and I'm like oh crap <laughs> you made those kids day to day man they were speechless that's why they weren't talking they're just like <laughs> they had this frozen look on their yes, face for man. those of you who don't know uh, uh, Chris gave out a uh, a free fishing trip last 4th of July not this past one but the one last year and the, the kid who won it, they just couldn't hook up on the on the day. And then uh, yesterday, or was it today? Today was that day, right? Yeah, that's the day. She took him out, and the kid was going on about all the stuff he knew about fishing, and Chris was getting impressed. And, and then he started bringing up Luke, and <laughs> and Chris just kind of died inside a little bit. And, yeah, and it's like, you on. know what? You know what? I'm just going to call Luke up. And so – Tell Parents about really that. need to watch what their kids are watching online. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, they were so happy, man. They're, they're talking about Luke this and Luke that. And I said, all right, you know what? I pulled the phone out. I didn't even say anything. I just called Luke. He answers the phone. What's up, Luke? And when I said Luke, they kind of looked at me. I was like, yeah. Hey, by the way, I got some kids here. keep talking about your videos. So I'll give you a call and let them say hello. And then the guy's just like, Hi. <laughs> he didn't even know what to say, but he was so starstruck. You just gotta get him let, hit the let down. You could just hear it over the phone, like, yeah, he's cooler. He's cooler when he's not being edited. <laughs> <laughs> you find your trolling motor, Luke? No. Uh, oh. Wait a oh, second. I, uh, I I've got a I got a video I'm doing where I like making a boat from scratch, and I I. My wife said it needs a trolling motor. You got to throw a motor on it, right? I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. She's a good woman. She is. She's right. <laughs> so I go out. Well, I got to film this thing, get it out. It's for next Saturday, so I'm like, you know, a haul it. So I went to a Walmart, two Dick Sporting Goods, and a Cabela's looking for a transom mounted trolling motor, and there was none to be found. None, none. There are, there are no trolling motors. It is a dearth of trolling motors. Or right, so, uh, okay. yeah. We uh, at any rate, we we we're gonna figure something out. I got some ordered online. I'm gonna experiment with leaf blowers. We'll we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Alex says hi, Luke. Alex, what's up? <laughs> That's what Chris is yeah. <laughs> yeah, I met I met Luke uh, at the first catfish conference, right? Hold it on. was the first one over there in uh, Hold on. for sales, Kentucky. I think, I think he lost his ears for a second. Oh, yeah, man. pretty much. <laughs> Trying to not wake up the kids here. There we go. Rel Relax. There we go. Anyway, uh, I was saying I met I met Luke at the first catfish conference in Versailles, Kentucky. That was the one that uh, Steve called, and he had said that oh, we're probably thinking maybe three, four hundred people are going to show up if you want to be a part of it, you know. And I'm like, 
man, I don't know. That's like 2,000 miles away. And Anyways, I said, yes, we did it. Luke showed up. One of my favorite photos of us, Luke, I don't know if you remember or not. But, uh, yeah. I, don't know if you, I don't know if you guys know, but Luke's like 10 foot 5 and I'm like 3 foot 4. I thought and, it was more. <laughs> <laughs> so it depends we depends on the aerometric pressure. It goes up. You know, <laughs> it's really hard to tell because he's always around little small kids. So you really yeah. don't know how tall he is until he gets up to an adult. Well, yeah, I'm about he's, the same he's size taller than kids. Chris, so it's, you know. <laughs> so we there's a picture floating around uh, at the first Catfish Conference where, where Luke and I took a picture, and we're – we're shoulder to shoulder, but I had to stand on a step stool to get to see his height, you know. And that's such a good picture of us, man. I, it was one of my favorite memories of that conference. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was good times. That was that was a cool event. Yeah, yeah. people were they were supposed to open like at nine o'clock, and at seven a.m. people were sneaking in the back door and buying wow. merchandise and stuff. By the time the the conference was supposed to open at nine. Half the vendors are sold out completely of their stuff. That's how big of a show it was. You, you can just that, feel it. You can yeah. feel it. Like, this is this is the thing. They got something going yeah. here. Oh, yeah. And that so you, Luke at that time, man, you had what did you have, man? Like maybe ten thousand subscribers or something like that. Something like that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. I, I remember, you know, Steve and Chris. You know, man, they're. The, I, the the term OG gets thrown around, and I think it's <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, they were they were just very very welcoming and and cool and helpful. To, you know, someone like me was just starting out, and it's, it's been it's been. Uh, I always remember that. Now that you've dominated YouTube, my friend. <laughs> yeah, now, now that he owns it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, I try. Was telling, I was telling Chris, man, you can't type in catfishing into the search box without. A carp and a cats and carp video showing up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. With like thirty different titles, man. <laughs> He's got to figure it out. Try to use the word catfish four times in the title. That's my my <laughs> uh, so you, guys, you guys just yeah. made like an instant friendship whenever you met. Oh yeah, Flores, man. Be Chris sick. Flores, man. You know, it's like there was a <laughs> lot of people behind me trying to get his instant friendship. <laughs> 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 once, once Luke's video started like surpassing mine, I'm like, man, I gotta, I gotta try to up my game and keep up with this. And I, and then I started like really paying attention to his videos. I'm like, I don't have the time or energy to even <laughs> attempt this. <laughs> Good luck, Luke. Go for it, man. Do your thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sleeping's nice. I, I mean. <laughs> Building cabins out of Legos in the woods. Yeah, man, I don't know. <laughs> I, I watch some of those videos of mine, and this this feeling of just exhaustion like comes over me. Kind of like, you know, you eat something that made you nauseous a couple of years ago, and that feeling. <laughs> I watch some of these videos like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I, there, was, there was one I did, one of, the, one of my first viral videos. I took Tommy out camping. And I was so stinking exhausted. I've been up to like 1 a.m. three nights in a row, you know, before the camping trip. And it was just me and Tommy. And Tommy was pushing my buttons. And I, I remember I sat down on a log and I just had like a 10-minute daddy time to like, how badly do we want this video? And I, <laughs> <sighs> and I, I pushed through and he was sweet as silk after that. And it worked out really well. But every time I watch that video, I'm just like, I just feel so exhausted. I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we, were yeah. to trip to, we were trying to put a trip to Spain together this year, man. But oh. that whole, we're going <laughs> to catch the whales cats. Man. Yeah, Chris, you told me about that. Chris yeah. got screwed out of both things, you know. He yeah. had to cancel because of his daughter's wedding. And then he didn't get to go to Spain. And, and the wedding was, you know, kind of yeah. just didn't. Didn't quite happen like they imagined either, you know. Yeah. Um, well, so good life, man. And we're still here. Let's we can always try right. again. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, hey, it's, hey, Luke, how how is how has Chris influenced you? Like, how did he influence you when you were getting your start? Oh, you know, it's just I think the biggest influence is, is it's just a nice guy, and this is you know the, certain people set a tone. For a community, right? You know, you come into a place, you know, you're not, you're a stranger, you come in, you meet a few people, 
and it sets the tone for what you think about all the other people who you don't know that well, you know, and, and Chris and Steve and, and just nice as the day is long, welcoming and, and, you know, that's, that's the standard you hope to live up to, right? You know, and you're like, oh, well, that's, that's how they do things here, you know, and I'm going to do that too, you know? So, you know, it's, it's a, it's, it's great because uh, as you know, there, we certainly have been online and there's a lot of ugliness online. And when you're isolated by yourself, putting out these videos, and you don't interact with people all in a real way, you kind of get this skewed look at, at, you know, fishermen and the community. And then you go into the catfish conference and you just meet the nicest people and you go, yeah, yeah, not all humans suck. That's right. Yeah, for real. People out there. Uh, yeah, gosh darn it. <laughs> I'm not going to kill everyone. I'm going to be a nice guy too. You know? <laughs> So, you know, anyway, you know, it's just, it's, it's, uh, so I think that's the best, the best I I influence is that, hey, we have a great community of cat fishermen and, you know, people are welcoming and, and helpful and, and I, I want to live up to that. So. Thank you, Luke. I appreciate that very much, man. You're, you're a great friend and uh, hopefully all goes as planned. I don't know uh, if, I know, I know you got a lot of stuff going on and we had talked about you potentially coming down and maybe doing some fishing and if, if it's uh, I got good vibes about that you know if if i and I'll, I'll bust out my hazmat suit and we'll get out there we'll get out there soon hopefully <laughs> I, just, I got some buddies that make you a new mexico license plate or, uh, ID or whatever <laughs> and we'll get you over here man <laughs> Well, you know, it won't be the first time I've snuck across the border, but yeah, you know. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right now, over here in New Mexico, you have to if you're not from New Mexico, you have to self quarantine for two weeks, or you can't be on state parks if you don't have a New Mexico license plate or an ID. So. Yeah, yeah, and, it's yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, it's that way. It's that's uh, it's a lot of stuff yeah. going. On. That's a whole different other conversation, right there. That's a whole show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So it's, what? It's very, it's very regional too. It's you know I went down to Louisiana and road tripped, and it's affecting different parts of the country very very differently. Like what what I'm seeing around here in Virginia, and what I see in Alabama, Mississippi, Louis. Not I mean even you get out of my part of Virginia and just go down the road an hour or two, it's totally different ball of wax, you know. So it explains in my mind a lot of the different opinions you see online. It's because it's you know. It's yeah, very very different. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah, we're one of the South Carolina's one of the hot zones right now, and we're not doing anything <laughs> to stop. It. <laughs> you have to, It's like uh, survival of the fittest in South Carolina. You just you take yeah. care of yourself, and uh, and, and you'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. About two steps away from fashioning armor out of football gear and doing Mad Max, you know. <laughs> well, well and that's the thing. That's the conversation. Football is all they're worried about. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's are we going to be able to play football? <laughs> Listen, people are dying, and you're talking about football. <laughs> anyway, like I said, that's a whole other show. Listen, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when is this when is this rematch going to happen? Oh, the man. Loop, the catfishing car, Muddy River, catfishing. And, I, and I'll do it with you. When's the next four-hour fishing challenge going to happen? Dude, I – I'm no idiot. I know when I got lucky. Man, don't, <laughs> don't rematch stuff when you get lucky. You know, it's like a casino. Walk away. Just walk away. <laughs> to go home, you fool. <laughs> we demand a rematch. <laughs> oh, well, we'll have to do that. We'll have to. Chris was talking a little bit of smack earlier. No, he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Not even you believe that, man. Come no, on. nobody <laughs> would believe that. <laughs> I, do, I do have a question for you, Luke. Sure. What do you do with all the stuff that you build and create after you're done with it, making it? Crazy. Uh -oh. You want to see this crap? <laughs> I feel like there's a constant bonfire going on at Luke's house oh. where he just burns stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's let's see. Yeah, this is here we go. Yeah. <laughs> so we got 130 fishing rods in here, I think, in various situations. That's just the axes. 
you know. Oh, I got to fix the boat too. I, I, I actually, with this boat project, I figured out I now have nine boats of various forms. Or <laughs> we need I, like a, a Captain Carp Museum. You just put it. I have in the it. biggest yard sales, man. We. we <laughs> Could you imagine stuff, buying stuff from Luke Yard too? <laughs> oh man! Yeah. Oh well, yeah. We, we, at least you have a video that explains what you're buying. <laughs> How it was made, made in America. <laughs> One pontoon boat, gently used, you know, ice breaking <laughs> crap. <yeah. laughs> so Luke, yeah, it, I appreciate you, brother. You're you're a great friend, man. I appreciate you jumping in here and spending time with us. It's it's awesome, no man. I'm hoping uh I'm hoping once everything settles down I get out there and do some fishing with you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm I'm gonna be trying to do uh a lot more traveling in here. Um and my guess is that I'll be able to travel domestically long before uh they'll let me overseas again. So oh uh you know, right now, you know, it's I don't I don't know any countries that I can go to. So so at least the end of 2020 it's kind of like mm, well we'll just we're just gonna plan some local adventures and uh, uh we'll see we're gonna go do alaska here for a while um but you know knock on wood and uh, uh we'll get out to get out to new mexico and, and get to do something here or hopefully not too uh, not too much time you just say when we'll make it happen brother oh, i appreciate that <laughs> Hey man, I appreciate you. I know you're putting the kids to bed and, and, uh, you know, you're, you're really busy, but, uh, you know, I, I, I told, I told Chris that this was not the plan. Uh, well, there really wasn't a plan until earlier this week of even having Chris on the show. Um, but you know, when, when Chris Flores says, Hey man, I want to be on your show, but can you do a different night? You say yes. So <laughs> I did that. And then tonight, as I was getting ready for the show, I just thought, you know, wouldn't it be awesome if I could get a lot of people that he's influenced in here to say some nice words to him? Because, uh, you know, we, we all know you, Chris, uh, whether or not you know us or not, we all know <laughs> you. We've all watched your videos and most, you know, a lot of us have met you at catfish conference. I'm looking forward to that. Um, so there's really not much you could say on a live stream, uh, that people don't already know. Cause you share, you share your life with everybody freely. So I just thank you you Luke and everybody else who's come in at the, at a last minute notice, just to say some kind words to Chris. It, it really means a lot to me as someone that, you know, has been here for a second. Uh, and it really means a lot. I, I hope to Chris. Of course it does very much. I appreciate all you guys, man. Um, like I said, I want to tell you guys a little bit, um, about this when, when we get to the end of this, but, uh, it, it, it falls right into what I've been thinking for, for years now, but I'll go for it. For the show's done. All right, go yeah. for it. So, uh, and I'm sure Luke can uh, can understand this too, being a YouTuber. So, uh, YouTubers and, and YouTube watchers, I, there's there's two categories. But uh, when you get a YouTuber and they dedicate themselves to making YouTube videos for the general public, it's a lot of work. You know, and it, it takes time away from family or it takes time. Away. It depends on what you're doing. You know, like Luke and I are lucky we include our family, but a lot of people don't. And, and it's just it's just time invested that you could have easily done with something else, you know, and and you're giving your you're giving of your of yourself to your viewers. And uh, and me personally, I. I enjoy that. Like I said, I do that to capture these moments that I spend with friends and family and uh, to preserve them for years to come. But also I do it to, to help entertain and educate people as best I can uh, to the best of my knowledge of what I'm doing, you know, but on people as YouTubers, a lot of times they don't have, they don't have even the slightest, uh, I don't know what's the word. Like they, they don't understand the impact that they're making on people, you know, and you can go years like I have and, and, and not really know the impact that you've made. I learned mine. I learned 
mine a little bit as once I started traveling because until I left New Mexico, I didn't, I had no idea how big of a channel I really had. You know, I'd run into somebody at a gas station or at, a, or at one of my kids' games, and they recognized me here and there from my channel. But I really had no idea of the impact that I was making on the catfishing community until I left and I went to Kentucky and I met these people who were lining up to meet me and shake my hand. And I mean, it was mind blowing. Right. And uh, so as a YouTuber, you're, you're, you're devoting yourself to these people and you're giving of yourself. But uh, at the same time, keep keep in mind that you you are making an impact. And uh, you may not know it, but it's out there. And uh, if, if you're lucky, you'll get the feedback. I, one of the ones that, that, that really hit me hard was uh, I went to Dallas one time and I was fishing with the guys over there. And this guy I'd never met before walks up and, and shakes my hand and he tells me, he says, hey, Pastor, Pastor Jesse uh, wanted me to say hello and thank you. And uh, I mean, it's like, okay. And he says, uh, Pastor Jesse is the pastor at the, uh, at the, uh, um, what's the place? And I forgot. It's the, uh, oh man, I forgot. I forgot. My mind just went blank, but, he, but he's a, he's a, where uh, troubled people go. And, uh, he said he, he was trying to connect with these people, uh, but a group of guys and, uh, he was trying different things and whatnot. And, uh, and these guys were just not having it, you know. And uh, then one day he went and he was watching YouTube and he found my videos and, and he, he he liked them. He said, you know, this guy's real mellow. His videos are kind of calming and, and uh, you know, entertaining. He says, maybe I'll play some of these guys' videos to this, to this group of people. And uh, so he took a, he took a TV and, and uh, started playing my videos. And he said, he said it connected with the big majority of these people and they they were actually they stopped what they're doing they're watching these videos some of these people gave up their drug addiction to start fishing and 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 uh, other 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 ones saw the the connection that i had with my kids and that they started having a better relationship with their kids and i mean it blew my mind you know because i'm i'm here thinking okay fishing content blah 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 you know a a to a to b but I'm not thinking of the connection I'm making down the line, like C, D, E, and F, you know? And uh, so as a YouTube creator, keep in mind that what you're doing is actually helping people, whether you know it or not. Now, as a YouTube watcher, uh, and you, you're watching these people's channel, like you're a big subscriber to so-and-so's channel or whatever, but uh, you don't take that minute to, to tell them, you know? or you know, it just it means so much and that's why i'm saying this is so perfect because there's a thing to me it's like youtube burnout you know you can get burnt out you i mean I, why am i even making videos man you know it's it's i mean i've done it for so long i've done this but it's the people if they take that minute or second just to say hey man you did this or or, or your video helped me here it means so much to the creator and uh for you guys watching uh just if you haven't, which a lot of you guys do, but if, if you haven't, take that time and tell that favorite YouTuber of yours, thank you, and uh, you know, let them know how they've helped you, and uh, because that's that right there is the fuel that we need to keep doing what we're doing. And uh, this video right here, man, is I mean, it's 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 amazing. You guys uh, showing so much love and support to me. I I, I can't be more appreciative of everything. You know. Uh, uh, what I do for the catfishing community, I, I don't really realize it on the big scale like you guys are showing me and, and, until it's right in my face, you know, and and uh, and thank you so much. You know, I, I don't see like Luke's as an OG or whatever. I don't see myself that way, man. I'm just the guy that loves to fish. And uh, I figured uh, I'll take a camera with me and throw some videos up and hopefully it helps somebody out. And, and here we are eight years later, man. And I love all you guys, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, you've you and 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 Steve and Luke, uh, you know, you guys have inspired so many people. So, you know, I, I agree with you one hundred percent. When when people take the time out of their day 
just to say something, you know, uh, it, it means, it means a lot. And, you yeah. know, if, if, th if this hope, hopefully this will fuel you up a little more, Chris. Oh so yeah. It has for sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Keep them coming. Thank you, Luke. Well, Luke, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you coming in. I'll let you get back to sleep. <laughs> All right. No problem. Talk to you guys later. All right, buddy. Bye -bye. Thank you, Luke. Thank you, man. Bye -bye. Awesome. Cool. I was hoping he would come in. He, uh, I emailed him earlier and, uh, he said that he would, he would stop by and, and, uh, man, I, I'm, I thank you for, for allowing me to extend the show, man, because we got three more excellent people. We got Kevin in here. We got Keith and, and Luke. So, man, that's awesome. And they're telling, they're telling me not to stop in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> well, how many, how many people you got watching, man? 43, 43. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hey, if you guys haven't hit the thumbs up, please do so. If you hadn't shared it out, I know a lot of people probably aren't up on the East Coast, but, um, you know, go ahead and share it out and they can watch it back. And, you know, Chris can see all the comments and everything come in. And, uh, you know, like he said, it'll fuel him to keep going. Absolutely, man. You know, I was. Uh, Alex says see. the three the three amigos. <laughs> so <laughs> Alex is still watching. <laughs> Alex still up watching, huh? That's awesome, man. Benjamin Bradford said, if it wasn't for Muddy River catfishing, I would probably never think to look for big cats in southern New Mexico. Yeah, Benjamin, they're out there, brother. Uh, actually, today, uh, today was a, a good day on the water. I was, I, I had my guide and <clears throat> my guided trip, my my clients and the the young guy Jojo. Uh, he caught that eighteen pounder. And not too long after, uh, a friend of mine, that we had, we, he had launched right right when I did, he called me up. He's like, hey, you got a scale on your boat? So, yeah, I do, brother. He says, man, uh, I just caught a fish that uh, I, I, I want to get a weight on. And so I rushed down there, and uh, it was a 31-pound blue cat, which is good right now because we've been catching nothing but dinks for the whole entire spawn, you know. So the big one's starting to bite, guys, just to let you know. Mm -hmm. uh a says chris most of us watch your videos and luke's and all the rest of the catfishing world are like family and we enjoy what you do and then the fellow we were talking about earlier popped in <laughs> and steve-o he said chris thanks for everything brother you taught me everything i know about catfishing yesterday was epic and i agree we saw that video <laughs> good old steve man steve he's a character i, I laugh uh, i don't know if you saw that video day of the dinks but uh, we were out on his boat. He's, he has this uh, G3 boat, and uh, we were just mm -hmm. messing around, and we were catching, catching a bunch of fish. And then he starts telling me, hey, so what you want to do is you want to reel up that slack. And I was like, okay, is that how you do it? And he's, he's always <laughs> telling me, dude, you taught me everything I know. So yeah. he's over here turning around teach, trying to teach me how to fish. <laughs> I just think it's funny. <laughs> he's a good guy. I enjoy fishing with him. Yeah, Benjamin said that was him. Uh, you weighed my fish. Oh, that's been okay. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, Mike Chavez says, "Tell Chris I have my T-bone hat on." Yeah. Oh, Mike Chavez, man, that's awesome, man. He's got a custom hat. Uh, back in my older videos, I had a dog named T-bone, and he's since passed away. And uh, Mike Chavez asked me to sign one of my cat hats and put mm -hmm. T-bone on there and all that. So he's he still got that hat, man. That's oh, awesome. Cool. Uh, Kev, who was on earlier, said YouTubers have a certain persona that they have to maintain, make a great impression, and the YouTube world is yours. Let's hope. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, sharing your experiences with your family on your videos is what makes you both so awesome. I love to see the interaction. I guess she's talking about you and your kids, you and Luke, um, sharing fishing with your kids. Thank you. Thank you. I got a question for you. How do you never age? I've been watching you for <laughs> I've watched videos for going back eight years and you look the same as you did when you first started. <laughs> a lot of a lot of hatch green chili, man. You gotta eat you gotta eat green chili. Green, green chili, green. that's the secret, huh? Yeah, that's the secret. <laughs> <laughs> keeps you healthy, keeps you from aging. <laughs> How important do you feel like branding is to YouTube channels and just you know yourself? Like you, I mean, and we, we've already kind of talked about branding, branding yourself as a family man, branding yourself as a good person, but let's talk about actual branding. 
you know, like your cat hat? How important is that to uh, how people recognize you? You know, it's, uh, I think it's, it, for me, man, I'm, I'm always, a, I'm always the guy, that, the guy that just kind of does something and it, and it, I didn't even think it through and it, it worked or, or whatever. Right. But uh, like the whole Muddy River catfishing name, I didn't, I didn't think of it as a, like a brand name at the time. I, I was just thinking I need to name my YouTube channel and uh, I want it to be different. So I'm thinking, well, what? What can I name it? You know, I, real grand fishing, real grand cat. Uh, that's, I mean, it's too, to me, it's too generic. Like, uh, I mean, so I was thinking about it and I was sitting there at my spot fishing and I'm like, well, I fish a river and I looked around and there's mud on my, there's mud on my boots. There's mud on my boat. There's mud on my sandwich. I'm like, <laughs> muddy river. Yeah. Catfishing. Well, yeah. And at that time, when I started my channel, catfishing wasn't really a term like that was recognized by the internet. So just typing in catfishing, it would automatically want to correct it like catfish fishing. It, it, it didn't make sense. So I said, well, I'll take catfishing because it's it's starting to come around. Muddy River catfishing. Muddy River because it's it's a little bit more broad. It can it can apply as a general area right? yeah it's kind of like uh, a, a mysterious yeah. name you know you don't really right. you really know what you're talking about unless they've right. seen your channel so, so that's that's where the name came from muddy river catfishing and then uh it was the only one in existence on the internet at the time and and it ended up sticking now i think i got like if you google it it's like eight pages of uh all muddy river catfishing you know and it's pretty much pertaining to me so that one i i hit the nail on the head and it, it worked out right the cat hat um the cat hat it, it's now my signature hat but the way that it originated was i used to i've always liked wearing a black hat or black in general i don't know if you guys ever noticed but i always wear black <laughs> anyway so i used to have a, a black spider wire hat that i uh, i used to wear all the time and it finally got worn out and faded and wanted a new hat and i'm the kind i like to keep it the same like i'll i'll wear i'll wear same clothes, same shirt every day, you know, same style, whatever, you know, I, I just kind of like the Einstein thing. I don't want to think about what I'm going to wear. Right. Not in your so, comfortable uh, one. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, uh, I was looking for uh, a hat. I needed something new. I couldn't find a spider wire hat anymore. And I remember I went to this yard sale and this man had this washing machine box just full of hats. And, uh, so I just kind of looked in there, I started digging around, and I pulled out this caterpillar hat, and I look at it, and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I could put fish right underneath there, you know, and, uh, and maybe a catfish right in the center or something. And uh, I was like, yeah, I bought that hat for like a 50 cents or something at the yard sale, and then I have a buddy who does airbrushing. I took it to him and was like, hey, you think you could do this? And he's like, yeah, man, piece of cake. So that's how that originated, and I stuck with it ever since. And uh, now I try to find the cat hats online and just get them airbrushed, you know, but mm -hmm. yeah, that's pretty much what I do. But Shoot, yeah, I, so thought, I thought that was a custom made hat. I've never seen yeah. it up close. So <laughs> yeah. 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 It's right there. Check it out. <laughs> awesome. awesome. But yeah, it's stuck, man. So uh, here we are with all these years later. And that's, that's, and just as you know, I'm I'm a businessman too, so you know I, I I have a small business as well, so you know I know how important logos are and right. and how important your brand message and your brand name is, uh, because we we talked about this on the phone. You know, once you once you start something and you put yourself in that corner, you have to stick with it, right? Um, because even the smallest change, I mean, look at look at what Coca Cola did. Uh, a while ago, you know, when they, when they changed that formula, you know, uh, what was it in the eighties, they changed the formula and people went crazy, right. you know, or, or Pepsi changing their logo, you know, something like that can really right. change your customer base. So, right. um, you know, not only is it your brand as in your logo, but your brand is in your message too. Right. Right. Absolutely. So yeah, I, that's kind of what I went with and I stuck with it and it's, it's worked well. Um, that is one thing that we were talking about. If you do make, 
your name or your logo, your, uh, you know, make sure you're set on that. Because like me, Muddy River catfishing, I have, I have pigeonholed myself into that catfish world. Uh, so I can't venture out and make hunting videos or I can't, you know, be out there uh, saltwater fishing all the time, you know, because it, it, I have to stick to my name, and, which I'm fine with because I've always been targeting, you know, forever targeting that catfish. But uh, it does kind of hinder like, man, I wish say, if ever I wanted to go hunting or do something, it just wouldn't make sense on my channel, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you are starting a channel and you, you know, you're thinking about your name, Make sure you're gonna you're gonna umbrella everything that you're doing. Yeah, like everything you think you might do. <laughs> right, right, right. Let's see. We had a couple. Um... Sorry. Uh, green chiles, frijoles, and cilantro are the key to that. I guess he's talking right. about your chilies. <laughs> MS thirty one two thousand. Or miss 30, 31, 2000. Uh, thanks to Chris and Luke, y'all made me fishing, made me a fishing fanatic and closer to all my boys. A big thank you to you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mike Chavez. Okay. They're talking to each other. Sorry. Thank you, Ace, for the compliment. It'd be a tough show to outdo. <laughs> they're talking <laughs> about chilies. I'm talking about chilies, chilies. Uh, <laughs> Can you shout out to my boys, Carlos, Chino, Damian, Christian, and Martin Jr. from Vernon? Uh, my sons are watching you right now. I love your videos. So, you want to say hello to them? <laughs> shout out, guys. Hey, Carlos, Chino, Damian, Christian, and Martin Jr. What's going on, guys? From uh, where are you guys from? Vernon? Vernon. Uh, I guess it's Washington, maybe. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching and thanks for the support. I appreciate you guys jumping in here. Yeah. Um, I think someone else had one. Tim Alina. The thing about Chris Flores that sets him apart is that it's not a persona he creates. It's him all the time. What you see is what you get all the time. I think that's really important. He hit the nail on the head with that one. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that, man. Steve-O said, we, we got to go out sometime with one Finn Drew. <laughs> So he he's giving uh, he's giving Drew a little a little to go. <laughs> oh man! So anyways, uh, Drew asked if he could borrow my float tubes and my my fins. He wanted to go out and take a buddy of his, and I said, "Yeah, no problem." So when he when Drew shows up, he shows up with uh, with only one fin, right? And he gives me he gives me one fin. He's like, I lost the other one. So it's like, well. What, <laughs> What do I want one pin back for? You know, <laughs> so yeah, that's a little little joke that old Steve's got going on there. <laughs> one pin, Drew. Maurice Kaysen said, "Ask Chris about swimming for his motor." Oh man, yeah, there was a a, fr a Friday the thirteenth of all days, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The guys from uh, Team Real Locos is a YouTube channel. If you guys are into like uh, like uh, rap style music about fishing they're coming up with a bunch of pretty cool songs uh so check out team real locos and uh anyways those guys came to fish with me one 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 year and we had two boats and we were going up my river my little stretch of river and uh <laughs> we're going up i come around this bend, and the other boat comes behind me and when I come around that bend, it was it was choked off. There was a bunch of uh, cattails and stuff that just choked it off. So I had to stop so we could clear the way. Well, the other boat didn't realize I stopped. It was just coming in full throttle. Oh man! And it and it it happened right like just at you know just at the wrong timing, I guess, because I I had the uh, my hand on the on the on the throttle and I was I was throttling down, and that boat came around and hit my it hit my motor and it. Full, it hit it so it spun it and full throttled that engine well it turned it like uh, parallel to the to the boat with the full throttle it shot it up and it spun it off the the transom of the boat wow. and it fell in the water and it's just spinning in a circle like that and i was trying to figure out how to grab it and then also it just goes and sinks down into the river 
And this, I mean, the water was probably like 40, 40 degrees. And I'm like, oh my God, my parents bought me that motor for Christmas. I'm already starting to I'm going to dive in. I mean, it's only like four feet. I'm like, I'll dive in. I'll get my motor. We'll just go right back to camp. I'll make a fire. I'll try to beat the hypothermia. And then my, they're like, whoa, 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 calm down. Like, Let's see if we can grab it. Maybe grab it with the anchor or something. So I'm like, all right, all right. If we don't get it with the anchor, I'm diving in. And uh, we can throw the anchor down. I drag it a couple times, end up hooking it, pulling it back up. And uh, between like, I don't know, I was like four of us were like, well, you know, pull the plug and drain the water and this and that. And we ended up pulling it, started right back up, man. So it still got us to where we needed to be. But what yeah, kind of motor was it? it's a Coleman, Coleman five horse. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Harley Neal says, hi, hi, Chupacabra Flores. Harley, yeah. Fish. That guy, he's, he's got a flathead rod named Chupacabra. He's a cool guy, man. Um, let's see. How much do you, well, we are talking about how much your fans mean to you? Uh, we've we've been all over the place with tonight, and I think I'm I'm very thankful for it. So I'm trying to catch us up on on my my questions that I had for you. Well, what are you looking forward to uh, to the next Catfish Conference? Man, the conference to me is, its I've always said it, it's like a big family reunion, man. It's uh, just like you said, all these people that uh, they come up and they they shake my hand and, and they tell me their stories and how, you know, whether it be related to my channel or not, or just in general talking fishing and, and you know, the big one they caught or the one that got away or, or the time they had with their family. or it, I just love it all, man. It's the one thing that I don't like about the conference, I told you, is that I don't get to go shopping, man. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, other than that, it's it's awesome, man. And even even after after the conference, people get together, go to a restaurant, hang out. Some people get together, go fishing. But man, it it is. I pretty much just look forward to that one event every year. Yeah, man. I like I said, I, last year we didn't go because we decided not to spend the money and um because we had another trip to colorado coming up and and then that got canceled so we ended up having two two uh little pods of money that we were saving up uh but don't worry i use it on a boat so <laughs> yeah. bring your truck man bring your truck this year when you go you're gonna need it you know, oh yeah man I'm, I'm coming man and i'm <laughs> I'm, I'm starting to save up my money now because i need uh, I'm going to sell all my spinning gear. I love spinning gear because I grew up with it. I think it's easier to use. It's more accessible for kids and right. new people on the boat. But for what I do, dragging the lake, uh, having that ability to free spool that uh, cast. I have I have a few Abu Garcias that I found at a yard sale. My wife found one in a storage unit. And so I just I had it redone and everything and put on a rod and just – where I can free spool that to let my planter boards out and to let my baits go out in front of the boat and drag them is so much easier. I don't have to sit there and flip that bail when that line gets caught up every time. So right. I'm coming out there and I'm going to check out your rods and I'm going to get some new reels. So I know I'm going to need big bucks for all of it. So I'm saving up, man. And I'm all right, the man. Truck. Be ready. You love it. You're gonna be hooked. I, guarantee you. I can't wait. And, and like you said, uh, I, I don't even know if I'm going to bring a camera. I, I probably will, but camera, I just really, I want to meet people without a camera in my hand. You know, does that make yeah. sense? Like yeah. I want to, I want to meet you and shake your hand and really talk to you. Um, you know, and just say, Hey, you know, it's good to see you in person and really right. know that, Hey, we're actually talking and there's not this medium in between me. Right. So I, I might do like Luke has this little thing on his um, book bag strap where he just hooks a GoPro. Maybe I'll just do that. Right. Um, I just don't want to seem like I'm interviewing everybody that I come up to. It's part of the, it's part of the gig, man. There's actually a booth for that, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we have what we call the YouTube booth and, uh, you can set up there, interview people. That it's part of it. Uh, I would highly recommend bring your camera, even if you decide not to use it. But you'll probably end up using it because that's the yeah. one place where you have 
access to all these people, you know, True. and, and they're willing to, to talk to you, you know, everybody there's willing to, yeah, I want to interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's do it. You know, it's not like, Oh man, this guy with his camera, you know, no, they're all about it. So really, yeah, that's, that's good to that's know. It, yeah. That's what it's about, man. It's, it's that one place where you can go buy everything you want to buy. Don't pay shipping to hand, put your hands on it, feel it, see the action. Uh, meet the people that you watch on YouTube, shake their hands, go have lunch with them, interview them, all of it. So it's all part of that experience. I'm, I can't wait, man. Like it's the event I'm looking forward to the most. Like, I just can't wait to get there. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get there and meet. And, you know, there's a fishing tournament down here on the East coast in North Carolina that I'm going to on August 15th, where I'll meet, a bunch of the local YouTubers around this area, but uh, right. you know, it won't be nearly as big an event as a catfish conference. So right. I, I can't wait. I need to, I need to start looking at hotel rooms so I can get one within walking. Yeah. Distance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, yeah. If you guys are watching or thinking about going to the conference, Shh, hotel don't tell rooms. them. Don't tell, no, no, don't, don't tell them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say anything, but book your room. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot, even if I got to drive to to and from the hotel, it's not even a big deal for me. I just, I can't wait to go. Um, I think it's just going to be awesome. And I can only imagine the amount of people that are going to be there. And I'm kind of hoping that all this COVID thing, well, not kind of, I am hoping that it's all done so we can meet each other without having to wear a mask. Right. Right. Although I do have my Palmetto Cats mask. Yeah. I, I got one. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Hey, so um, have you thought about talking to Steve about making a time to where all the vendors can shop? Like, you know, I know you say it's it's not always that you don't have somebody at your booth. It's that, you know, you run into people every five steps and you you love talking to your fans. So you want to do that. But if you didn't, if you didn't have that um, opportunity to do that, maybe if everyone, the fans were outside, or maybe uh, a few hours before it started, they gave you guys time to shop. Have you ever thought about that? I mean, you can, you can go, you can go see vendors' booths and stuff before the doors open. But it's, it's tough because as a vendor, you're usually trying to get there and get everything set up and make sure all your stuff's ready to go and stuff. So. Uh, if anything, it's usually the second day of the of the show that you could probably do that. Uh, I probably could have done that this last show, but I misunderstood that the show was starting at I think nine. And so we got up, we're over there. It was like eight o'clock. We're getting breakfast and stuff, and uh, Leslie <laughs> Leslie calls me from. Uh, uh, she calls me. She's like, Chris, where are you at? I said, uh, oh, I'm getting breakfast. Where are you at? She's like, I'm here at your booth. And there's like a big old crowd of people <laughs> wondering where you're at. I said, oh, man, what do you mean? She said, we opened at 8, not at 9. I was like, oh, I'll be right there. Oh, no. So, yeah, that was just a, a mix-up on ours part. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's insanity, man. There's, I mean, so many people there. And I love every bit of it. I mean, so, I mean, because everybody's on the same page, you know. Everybody's there for catfishing, you know. That's what we all love. It's our it's a shared passion. So it's not hard to to connect with people, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Chad says some of us need a mask, even if it has nothing to do with COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I know he's talking about me, man. It's the mustache. No. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. Keith said he loved to get and meet you, brother. It helps put a face to the name. Uh, of course, we all know what your face looks like. <laughs> <laughs> helps put his face to his name maybe <laughs> so um i do have i think i only have one question on here that i didn't get a chance to ask you um who do you look up to as an angler because you know a lot of people and they've said it tonight and in chat and those that were able to come on live they all look up to you um but who do you have to look up to man that's a good question you know i I think that uh, it, everybody has, man, it, you can learn from everybody. 
that's one thing that I've learned, you know. Uh, Steven, as a matter of fact, I was talking to him about Steve Douglas videos. I said, have you watched some of his stuff? He says, he says you know, I, I really don't. I really don't watch Steve's stuff because I I don't connect with what he's doing because he's fishing these big rivers and he's fishing this. Yeah, he said that in the video. Yeah, and I told him I said, man, what uh, what you what you don't get is that you can transfer that knowledge and apply it. Maybe not on the same exact aspect, but you can get something from it and 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 uh, and use it over here. A, A perfect example is this. The Muddy River catfishing bobber that I use, mm-hmm. never even heard of it until I went fishing to to uh, Wichita. I met a guy named Chris Parrish there, and uh, he had these these foam bobbers that he was using. And I I looked at it and I kind of scratched my head and I turned to wrap my brain around it. He's like, "Man, you got to check out these bobbers, man." And, uh, so we went fishing. I that was the first time I used the bobber, and man, we we caught some fish. And I was like, "Okay, okay." So I started using the bobber and uh, we started marketing it together. And then I started applying it to where I fish, right? Well, Chris came to fish with me one time and I put him in the boat and I'm like, yeah, well, let's use these bobbers, man. And I started throwing the bobber. He's looking at me like, whoa, what are you doing? You know, I said, what do you mean? What I was doing, I was, I was using the bobber. I was floating it downstream right up to a, a, a log jam or a brush pile and let it sit there. And he's like, I'd never do that, man. I said, what do you mean? He says, I'm, you're, you're going to get hung up. I said, nah, watch. And boom, we're catching fish. So the guy who taught me how to use bobbers actually learned from me another technique on how to use his own product. So everybody contributes in their own way. So if you go with an open mind and, and watch these videos and watch you know these techniques and then take it and, and apply it in your own way, you can come out with something totally new, you know, that you haven't been trying. So it doesn't hurt to get out there and watch all these guys and see what they're doing and see how you can make it your own in a sense. So you look, your answer would be you look up to fellow anglers. I look up to all, not one particular. Uh, I look up to all my fellow anglers. Absolutely. I'll, you know, I'll watch, I'll watch, uh, any any given video, man, and and uh, and see what I can pull from it. You know, uh, there's guys in in uh, in Dallas that I fished with that, uh, I, like me personally, I hate the wind. I hate fishing when it's a windy day. And these guys love the wind. They won't even go really? fishing. They won't even go fishing if there's not a certain amount of wind or if it's not hmm. blowing from a certain way. And uh, you know, I learned some stuff from that. You know, and. Uh, I call them the wind fishermen, man. You know, that they, they use it to their advantage. They have techniques that they use that I learn from. It's like, okay, I see. That makes sense, you know. Uh, but it's it's all in, like I said, you, you fish with people. You, you see what they're doing, and you see how you can apply it to your waters. So okay. everybody everybody has That's something. That's a good answer, do. man. That's a yeah. great answer. Uh, fishing and stuff. I look up to Chris as a YouTuber. He's a great angler. But he's a better YouTuber. I don't know if that was him throwing shade or not. Everyone <laughs> does it finds out quickly it's harder than it looks. Yeah, YouTube is way harder than it looks. It looks like you're just putting your phone up and filming something and throwing it out there. But, uh, yeah, it's it's way harder. you got to put a lot of thought into what you do. You know, the one, the one, the one tip or, or word of advice that I give to people who are trying to film themselves – is to not talk to the camera like it's a camera and talk to it like it's one of your friends, you know, because that's really who you're talking to is you're, you're talking to the audience and, and yeah. as a friend, you know. So when I'm out on the water and having to have these conversations by myself, you know, I just feel like the like it's a it's a buddy of mine that doesn't really like talk much, you know, he just likes to listen. Uh, so I just tell him what's <laughs> on my mind or what I'm doing and, you know, yeah. explain. You know, maybe he's like new to fishing, so I kind of explain to what I'm doing and stuff. But you just, I just kind of have that mentality. I, I, I'm, I'll be the first one to say that sometimes I talk to the camera like it's a camera, like yeah. it, it's a, like there's nobody behind it. So I'm getting better at that, and I think that's great advice. Um, the, the guest I had um, last week, uh, 
River certified Sp- uh, Spencer Bauer. He's really great at that. You know, he'll just, he'll talk to himself. Right. Right. <laughs> so, and it comes across just like, you know, we're right there with him. Uh, right. KMB said, Pop walked up to Chris at CatCon last year, immediately had that famous grin and called us by name. <laughs> new YouTubers and made us feel like celebrities. <laughs> that Chris knew us. That's awesome. awesome yeah. Thank That's you. Awesome. Guys. My phone just said it's getting ready to die. So that's right. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. Um, let me see. Any cool man. Well, hey, uh, I just want to say to everyone that came in and stayed in, we still have over 40 people in here uh, after awesome. two hours and 15 minutes. Um, something new, if uh, everyone who's in here does, doesn't know, I've turned all of these live chats into podcasts, and you can get them on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So if you're driving and you want to listen back or you want to share it with somebody, uh, that's a great way for you to listen uh, and just relive the moment, or maybe you might find something that you've missed. I've listened to some already, and I've missed I missed some of the questions that I was even or the answers I was getting because I was looking at chat. So uh, go check that out. Of course, go check out MuddyRiverCatfishing.com and the YouTube channel. Of course, go check out. Uh, Chris has got some fantastic products. Um, you know, he's got the the Muddy Rat Catfishing. Uh, Muddy River catfishing poles, the Muddy River flathead rod, and a blue cat rod, and then your bobbers. And he's got some cool merch. You need to put a big boy shirt on there. You only got up to three X, man. You need I can to get, get you whatever you want, man. You just tell yeah, me. I need, I need a four. I need a four. Uh, at least one, until man. I start back work, I, I can get back into a three. All right. <laughs> All this fishing, man, and eating snacks on the boat has made me gain weight. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Chris, I like to do something. Um, that you're probably aware of. I like to pray us out, man. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do that now. Hey Lord, we just thank you for tonight. Wow. What an awesome night it was. And thank you for the inspiration to do this. And Lord, I just thank you for men like Chris who really put their heart out there for others to experience what it's like to be a real man, to be an authentic man. Uh, Too often we live for the world and the world tells us, what the definition of a man is and that's to cut people down and to be closed off and to be selfish and self-righteous. And Lord, Chris is an authentic man and he lives it in his real life and he lives it on video and he lives it through his business. And just like some of my viewers said, Lord, he, that's just who he is. Tim Lean, I think said it. That's just who he is every day. There is no persona. And Lord, I just challenge I want you to challenge all of us men in here and women to live like that, to live our lives like you're watching, Lord, like everybody's watching us and everyone's got us under a microscope because, Lord, at the end of the day, we need to be loving each other and we need to be supporting each other. Lord, I thank you for a country to where I'm allowed to do this without without conviction, without the law coming down on us, Lord, that we can come in here and share our ideas and share our thoughts without fear of persecution. Lord, I just thank you for my channel. I thank you for what it's done for me. But Lord, I thank you for giving me a platform where I can share scripture and share my love for you. And it's in Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Chris, man, it was an absolute pleasure. I, I just thank you for, you know, you were a small YouTuber once, and I know that you know how hard it is to get started. And I just appreciate you giving me the time to come in here. And I just wish you the best of luck and everything. And I can't wait to meet you in February. Well, thank you, man. You're doing a great job. You keep doing what you're doing, man. You'll be up there in no time. I appreciate it. I just, if I can do half a quarter of what you've done just to share. Uh, love with people and to share the sport. That's all I want. So you you'll surpass me, man. You'll be surprised. Nah. You're doing great, man. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. But hey, man. God bless. Thank you, y'all. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. Um, one more shout out for the uh, the YouTube channel of the week. If you missed that, that's going to be a new segment every week. I'm going to highlight a new YouTube channel, and that's Kentucky Catfishing. Cody Abney. Go check him out. Links in the comments somewhere. Uh, he's an up and comer, and he's 
a young kid really trying to do the best he can. So thanks again, Chris. Thank you guys. I love all you guys, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for putting That's up it. with me for eight years and an extra two hours right here. <laughs> hey, here's, here's the eight more brother. <laughs> Thank you, brother. All right. Bye-bye.